Hey. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 I just realized I don't have my headphones and I feel naked right now. Where are they? I think they're in our office. Here you oh, go, buddy. man. Have some. Have some. Got some spares? Oh, yeah. I got some, too. Toss me a spares. We have a travel with at least one extra set. A doctor showing up without a stethoscope. <laughs> it's all right. I can hear everybody. Scott's not here. Oh, well, there. I, I can still hear you guys. Yeah, but what if I play something off the computer here? Oh, then you couldn't hear it. Toast, then I you're will You're missing the cool energy up cool, music yeah, right now. Yeah, you're missing the energy up music. You're missing, you know, like... Oh, you make a good... Whoa. Oh, I'm just playing a fart sound. You had no idea. You would have been cracking up. You had up. no you idea. Had no it. You had no idea. <laughs> Let me put on my cans, as they say in the as biz. As they say in the biz. Nice That's right. Cans. The cans. Nice cans. Uh, you guys know what... Uh, Herkle Durkling is. That's an old U2 song, isn't it? <laughs> that's when th a bunch of guys stand in a circle. Nope. Uh, <laughs> one, that, that's no, when Ned no, Flanders no. stands in a circle you with sure? his friends. Herkle and Durkling. Oh, Herkle. Herkle Durk. Herkle Durkling. Oh, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Apparently, it's a new thing. The Gen Zers are talking about Herkle Durkling. Herkle Durkling. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's actually an old Scottish term. Herkle Durkling. I thought it was that. <laughs> it's with a U, not an E. I misspelled it. Sure Herkle Durkling. Team America. <laughs> no, nah, it's Durka Durka. <laughs> Durka Durka. That's a Durka Durkling. Okay. It's Guys, this is TikTok's new favorite term. Herkle Durkling. And I like to keep you guys informed. Yes. What are the kids talking about? And that's why you turn on this radio program mm -hmm. anymore uh, every morning to find out. Because we got our thumb... And everything is that is hip and cool. Yes, on the pulse of cool. Because as as you know, we are the coolest people in St. Louis. That's right. It's been spray painted. Yeah. Yep. It's been uh, well. That's been it's been declared. Uh, okay. So it seems like Gen Z just came up with uh, with bed rotting. Remember bed rotting? Yes. Oh, that's did that's it on old, Sunday. But that's old news. We don't call it bed rotting anymore. Okay. It's called herkadurkling now. Mm. It's an old Scottish term for when it's time to get up, but you stay in bed anyway. Been doing this for 38 years. For example, I was late for work because I herkle-durkled for a solid 20 minutes today. Yep. Herkle-durkle. I have chronic herkle-durkle. I should go to the doctor. Here's uh, somebody talking about it. Just thought you guys should know that the Scottish have a word for laying around in bed after it's time to get up, and it's called herkle durkling. I do be herkling, and I do be durkling, and once I've herkled my last durkle in a given morning, I will get up, but I'm a big fan of a herkle durkle, so you should be too. All so right. It's like dilly-dallying. Just laying in no, bed. No, it's bed rotting. It's, it's staying in bed instead of getting up and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I want every 40-something... To use that term this weekend in front of a kid. Let's ruin this for the kids. I do feel like that's a better term than bed rotting. Bed rotting is so shame, shameful. It's it's so shaming. Right. You know what I mean? Like on occasion, sometimes I just need a. My brain needs to turn on and my body needs to say. So you need no. a good harkle darkle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes the brain pops on is like, hey, you should get up, and your body's like, but not today. No. Nope. Not. Right, not today. Not, Today's a harkle darkle day. Not right now. You know, and I don't need to be shamed for it. I mean, look how hard I work, man. Yeah, bed rotting does seem like a shameful thing. Yeah, that's not okay. I don't need to be shamed. Maybe some people do, but I do not. Herkle Durkle wellness trend could improve your mental health. The kids are oh, on good. That's we all we all need a little uh, a little rest, a little relaxation. Herkle Durkle sounds like the uh, the verb for when somebody is doing like um. You know, like a bartender is like shaking the ice, like they're making a drink, and they have it in the metal cup, and it goes, jum, jum, jum. you know, that's yeah. a herkle durkle. That kind of sounds like a dance in the fifties to me. The old herkle durkle, the, the, the herkle durkle. Your grandparents went to the sock hop and did the herkle durkle. Yeah, yeah. Of course, leaving room for the Holy Spirit, cause you gotta. Well, maybe. Or is the Herkle Durkle Satan's dance? Might have been back Probably. then. Might have been back mm. then. 1800s is when it originated. Gin joint. That was the gin joint. <laughs> ah, go to the gin joint and Herkle Durkle. Your grandma puts her poodle dress up above her head. <laughs> and that's how your father was born. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh -uh. 
Not my grandma. I saw an, uh, oh, no, not your, not your grandma. No. Now. No? No. My grandma did it missionary. I was the first one to break protocol. That's worse. Hmm. <laughs> so where where were your where were your parents from? Not, not not your parents. Your parents' parents. Like so, your grandparents. I don't know. Your adoptive grandparents. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. They didn't immigrate over here. No, no. I mean, I like, mean, where? No, they... you said your family fought in the Battle of Hastings. <clears throat> well, yeah, it was a minute ago. It was ten sixty. Well, where did that happen? It was in England in 1066. And yeah, okay. So let's start from there. I don't think that's what he means. Let's start from there. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that's what he meant. It was like. Oh, is that what you mean? No, no, no. Like where did you, so like I knew where my grandparents lived. Oh no, yeah, no, rural Missouri. Somewhere. Rural. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, Gerald and uh, down in uh, southern Missouri, I think. Yeah, I, I, that's about as narrow as you're gonna. That's about as zoomed in as I can remember. Oh really? Uh -huh. Do you remember going out there at all? No. Like, did you know? Uh, well, your, did yeah. you know your grandparents? Kind of. Uh, so my grandfather died when I was five. Mm. Um, I have a few flashes of him. My other grandfather died three years before I was born. Um, and then my grandmother, uh, well, her leg died in the early nineties, but the rest of her died in the late nineties. Her 90s. leg. Uh, my leg. And then my other grandmother died in ninety one. Um, and I, so one side, my mother's side, I, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. So definitely they're. rural. I, I have no idea where they're from. My father's, uh, parents were from, uh, yeah, like central, central and southern Missouri. Mm -hmm. Super rural. Ger Gerald, Missouri has some sort of ties. Like I know they've been taking care of a cemetery out there for decades. Um, and, and Gerald, I've driven through Gerald. Yeah, and then uh, it's and, out near Owensville. And we used and, to like in the '80s, we had family reunions, with, like a bunch of people I didn't really know, um, down in uh, Poplar Bluff. Okay. So there's there's some people down like they're but they're from further south in Poplar Bluff. That was just like the so so point. real role. What about what about your grandparents? So uh, after they immigrated from Italy um, and Germany, my grandma, my dad's side, uh, my grandma came from Tennessee, and my mom's side, like Nebraska. So yeah, Nebraska and Tennessee. So your your dad's side, dad's side Tennessee, Tennessee. Your mom's side Nebraska. Uh -huh. and they met in the middle, and they met in the middle, and they wound up in <coughs> Illinois. Illinois. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. What about the Williamses? I just assumed that we evolved out of a coal mine in southern <laughs> in Illinois. Southern Illinois. <laughs> There's no lineage. It's just like a single celled organism that like climbed if you took out a twenty three and me climbed out of a black diamond coal mine and just turned into a family. Yeah, like my twenty three and me is like, you know, a lot of like you know, Eastern Europe and yeah. you know, like that's one dot. Yeah, yours is one dot in Southern one Illinois. Dot on the <laughs> on the tip of Illinois Wang, right at the bottom. And I'm okay with it. Seriously? I mean, so you could trace your I, I don't both know. you know I, I mean my Supposedly Both Sicilian. Uh, my grandfather was Sicilian lineage, but he was my step grandpa, mm. technically. So I guess that doesn't count. On my mom's middle, my mom's maiden name is Ford. So I don't know what is that English. What is that? I don't know. Dude, what if you're like? I never a, met her. What if dad. you're like a distant yeah, what heir if to King the Ralph? Henry Ford. God, the Henry. Awesome. I know. Get that Ford money. Oh, dude. King Ralph. Dude, good reference. That'd be sweet. It's Sean Goodman. I'm kind of scared to do Remember that movie, cause... King Ralph? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, what a great movie. I'm concerned about my family tree being a little too up and down and not enough branches. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, It yeah. freaks me out a little bit. I don't want to know. I'm telling you, do the 23 and me. Give a little bit Irish in DNA. there somewhere. My I'm resetting my password right now. My great-grandma was a Patton. It was her maiden name. And then they came, I think, I mean, so, a, so a little Irish. of George S.? Don't know, maybe. Dude, you got a couple famous last names. Patton and Ford. Patton and Ford. Strong Patton men. Hero. Strong men yeah. with problematic opinions about the world. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So, we, so, so you think on your side you got rural, learn, you got rural. Oh, yeah. My grandfather uh, was a milkman, and that's that's when he came to the city. I gotta have some right. Appalachia in there. You got some rural in you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like one, of my great 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 grandfather was just a hand rolled cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is a uh, you know, there's a movement, at least for some people, to uh, I guess live off the grid, mm -hmm. get out of the big cities, 
Hmm. And we kind of talked about country living earlier this week, you know, the pros and cons of living out in the country. But if you truly want to live off the grid, like you could do it, mm-hmm. like you could do it. It'd be a pretty boring existence to me. To me, that would be. And people do it all the time. Look, I have a list right here of all the people that are off the grid. It's, they're on a list. It's, uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's, that's the point. That's the point. You're talking about off the grid, off the grid. Off the grid. Like, like the government can't find you. So if you're looking to live, be- well, I mean, I don't know if the government, you know, can't find you, but. But I mean, isn't that the grid you're, you're talking about? I mean, the literal Can electric you truly grid. Can you live and- off the grid? You got to know how to do a lot of stuff. That's what I'm talking about. I, that's what I thought you were talking about. I mean, there's two levels I don't of know, off but, the grid. Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's Ted Kaczynski. I live in a, in a shack up in Montana mm-hmm. off the grid. And there's, I'm really, I'm far out there. Far out there, but I still have accounts. There's conne- There's some connection to right. civilization. That ain't off the grid. Off the grid is you have no accounts. Mm-hmm. You got no bank accounts. You got no account with Ameren. You got no, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have accounts. Yeah. That's Can off the grid. Can one truly live that way? I think there are people living that way. Graham Nash lives that way. From Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Nash Bridges lives that way, too. Graham Nash lives off the grid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's Graham Nash. He's on the grid because he's Graham Nash. True, but he he made his money, and then he said, I'm out. And now he only comes out every now and then. Oh, my God, what a dream. Right? That's cool. Hey, he divorced he, his wife. He ever pops shacked up. up with some other broad. And but I'm sure Graham grid. Nash has bank accounts. He doesn't have all sure. his, well, his money. Well, off the grid. You know, in, in a in a. In a mattress, somewhere. In a mattress in a cabin? In his very, <laughs> very nice cabin. His money cushions his sleep. So if you're looking to live beyond the status quo, okay? what the Creedence guy did, too? John Fogarty? Didn't John Fogarty say, you know what, mm-hmm. this this industry, this business is he still goes full out. of crap. I'm he out still of goes here. out. Oh, so it was just the business he left. Yeah. He still tours. Okay. So if you're looking for more like, uh, more of a sustainable lifestyle, maybe. Mm-hmm. God, I couldn't do it. You got to grow your own stuff. Right. Yeah, but that, but that's your, that's but wild. that would be your job. You get up every day excited to check on your tomatoes, and God dang, man, it'd be the coolest. Like, it, it, what? It, it, yes, I, I think I think it would psychologically. I think it would. Once you got in that groove, then you're just working to to live, and like life would take on a much deeper and bigger. Okay, but you're losing contact with all your friends. Yeah, no phone. What do you, What do you mean you're losing? Contact? You don't have Wi-Fi. If you're off the gr- If you're off the grid. I okay, mean- I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking about growing <laughs> your own food. <laughs> you could be a gardener, and that is cool. Yeah, you, yeah. I you just mean having like a homestead. I just, I, some sort. I'm going to need Wi-Fi. I'm going to need to be able to order things on Amazon that I can't build myself. I will. I don't think I could. I could be completely off the grid. I could grow my own food, and I, you know, we got the solar panels now. That's cool. And everybody's interested in that. I was taking a walk the other day, and my neighbor Tony's like, "Hey, how how much is that Ameren bill?" I'm like, "Dude, it's twenty dollars. It's pretty cool." But um, yeah. And I now that you got your solar panels, yeah, twenty uh, bucks, twenty cool. bucks. Nice. Oh, it's pay- it is. I am nice. rolling in it. It is it is starting to pay for itself. <laughs> Dude, you just bought a Maserati. I did. Well, and listen, and, and somebody brings up a good point. Would the government allow you to live off the grid? Of course not. Like you, have, I mean, if you have a house on a piece of on a piece of land. Yeah, there are, there are there are rules. There are rules, man. There are rules. <laughs> but with that being said, okay, so let's let's talk about kind of off the grid. So you're saying participate in the uh, in the um, society in the very bare minimum, only what's required, everything else not off the grid. That's what you mean? Right. Okay. So there are three states where living off the grid is kind of possible. Can I guess? I have number one, two, and three. Go ahead. What's number one? Oregon. No. New Mexico. No. Well. Wyoming. No. Texas. Texas number three. Mm. Texas offers plenty of options, plenty of agricultural opportunities, tax credits for installing solar or wind energy, and relatively low land prices. Montana. No. Virginia. No. West Virginia. No. Missouri. Yes. Missouri. Number two. The second best state to live in if you want to be off the grid. Nice. Um, it, there are areas where there are no building or zoning codes. Uh, lower cost of living, a pretty temperate climate, and relaxed rules on homeschooling. Hmm. Interesting. Missouri is number two. 
And the number one state, if you want to go off the grid. If we, are we ever going to guess this? No. It's Tennessee. Right on. Oh. Hmm. Tennessee is number one for off the grid living. Plenty of rain for, for legally harvestable water. Homesteading opportunities on public land, fertile land, and lower cost of living. Wouldn't you think Alaska would be up there too? Yeah, the harsh climate though, man. Yeah, but I mean, if you're there, you're kind of ready for it. You know what you know. You know what you're into. I'm just telling. I, I mean, I met a lot of interesting people the couple of times I've been up in Alaska. And there's, there's, <laughs> Andrew's like there's off the grid. Folks. You mean homeless? No, 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 no. That's no. A, no. no, no they, they, they have a home. No, they have a home. It just doesn't have an address. Right. Yeah, not homeless. But there are, and, and we've talked about this before, there are places that you could go that actually will pay you to relocate. You hear about this? There are, like, incentives oh, to yeah, move yeah. to different places. Like different uh, countries, too. Different, well, here in the U.S., there are a bunch of different cities that, like, if you're thinking about moving somewhere, mm -hmm. and, and they're offering incentives, like cash incentives to move there. Like Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, I had a buddy just move there, and he loves it. Like, they are offering $10,000, like, to move there. I got a friend that, um, he was uh, from, like, St. James area, you know, lived up here in St. Louis for a while. He's got a, he's got a full family, moved to Tulsa, and he ain't never coming back. He's loving it. Nice. It's a cool town. Uh, George is like, and this is why our country is no longer the free. What? Bull crap, all because the government wants your money. Y'all acting like this is oh yeah, y'all act like this is okay. Hell's wrong with you sheep. What? What? <laughs> all the keywords. Shut I'll up. be right back. I gotta go watch a Jordan Peterson video. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, calm down, George. What the hell's wrong with it's, you? It's okay, Easy, man. George. We're just we're just talking. Did we're the, just talking. Did the solar the panels trigger you, George? I'm sorry. No, not even that. Well, I don't know what this guy's talking uh, about. He didn't say anything. Relax. We're not on you do you, man. Who do you? I just thought it interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. I just found it interesting. If you, George, you live in Missouri, go ahead, go yeah. off the grid. This yeah. is, I'm giving Welcome. you, Hello. I just gave you. The directions. Yeah. The coordinates. <laughs> How are you listening? You could do it, George. We live in a state where it's possible. <laughs> yeah. No, like if you want to move to Tulsa, they'll give you 10 grand. Uh, if you want to move to Topeka, Kansas, they'll give you uh, up to 15 grand. Well, I'll tell you what, Tulsa ranks over Topeka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Topeka has a program a called Choose Topeka that offers incentives. Sorry, Kansas. Valued it up to 15 grand to attract people in addition to offering financial incentives. The program also helps uh, connect new residents with housing and jobs. And the program's been pretty successful with over 6,000 people applying. Uh, the Shoals, Alabama, they would love to have you down there. Now, is this an incentive for the government to do this? As an ex you were part of the experiment to see how you would do it, and then they study that, and that's the incentive for them to offer the incentive of money? I don't know. They want people moving in so they get, I guess, the tax revenue or mm. more businesses. I think, yeah, I think they're trying to grow some of these, some of these places, some especially of these, throughout some the of these cities. Would you say the Shoals? Uh, dude, that's a cool area, and I don't want you down there. Well, they, they want you down there. No, they don't. No, they're just kidding, man. The Shoals in Alabama's northwestern region is offering up to ten it's, grand to remote workers who relocate to the area. That's where we go. You know, Aren't we, your in-laws? Yeah, yeah. Your in-laws are from there. My mother-in-law's from there. And it's, uh, it's the jam. But it's isolated, and nobody's yeah. friendly, and they hate you there, and you don't go. <laughs> not beautiful at all. Uh-uh. It ain't pretty. <laughs> it's not the best lake ever. <laughs> I do they love watch you. I do love it down there. Uh, Rochester, New York. I don't know why anybody would want to move there, but they want you. God, dude, What's Rochester that like? is sadness. Oh, uh, sadness. It's, it's, it's so it's sad, industrial? dude. That's a city of sadness. It's so gnarly. <laughs> if you look in the party in your youth, go Rochester's there. Rochester's like Buffalo got depressed. Yeah, yeah dude. It's Buffalo with, with somehow like a cloud in the city. Like, I just, think they got like three days of sun the entire year. Oh, dude, it, it's them. And it's always like. It's always cloudy. It's, the party, it's cold. That's what I think the, of. The parties are insane. And that's not a good sign. The parties are insane because everybody's just trying to forget that they live in Rochester. That's <laughs> and I'm being serious. And 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 I'm fine saying this because I know that if you're from there, you you're know. not insulted by this. Because you know. And I love the shows. The shows are always great. Like Water Street Music Hall, a couple other places there. Great shows because people are just like begging for some sort of release. Mm -hmm. Not a good sign. You'd go there. Uh, so we had friends up in Syracuse. 
like they go to Syracuse College, you know, Cruising. Syracuse University. That's what that reminds me of. Uh, and then, you know, you make your way to Buffalo and you drive to Rochester and it's just horrible. It, oh. Xerox. <laughs> it's just horrible. It's just horrible. Xerox is headquartered there. Oh. What's up with um, Montauk? What? Long Island? Is that what that is? I've never been there. Oh, Montauk no, is the way, edge. That's way, way, way different. That's the is that edge. cool? Of, yeah. Montauk. Very, I'm going to nice. go there. Yeah, very nice. Expensive. Uh, my very boy, expensive. Uh, Sean O'Brien's from Rochester. Sometimes fills in down on Casey, comedian here in town. And he's, I've asked him, I go, how come you don't go home and do like a show in Rochester? You can sell it out your hometown. He goes, <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. I'd imagine a lot of good comedians should come out of Rochester. <laughs> it should be a great place for just comedy. the fact that he won't. The one place he could sell tickets is, is probably his hometown and make some money. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, ah, ah, I'm good. They always had, and, and, and when I say parties, like these these dance party things and these clubs and these bars, they never last long. But they were famous for having, like, really different types of parties because they have to get creative to entertain themselves. Mm. Well, they want you to move there. So they're offering ten grand in grants and incentives to, to people who relocate to Rochester. Ten grand. Ten grand. Tulsa. Take Tulsa. Yeah, I'd rather take, take Topeka Tulsa. over that. Uh, West Virginia, the state. Like they're offering twenty grand. Hmm. Like you apply for this grant, twenty grand to to move to West Virginia. The program, which is in its third year, has received some uh, uh, forty two thousand applications. It's beautiful. Indiana to attract workers. No they're nice. offering relocation packages up to fifteen grand. We know a few people that took those as well. A lot of people went from here to Indianapolis. Uh, like uh, like the city of uh, Noblesville, which is a suburb of Indianapolis, like they'll give you five grand like for, uh, for relocation per like year, a, just one one time. Probably a one, well, like no. a one shot. Like, hey, we'll help you move. Yeah. Five grand's good we'll, for moving we'll, expenses. We'll buy your furniture. Okay, here's what Noblesville will give you: Noblesville, Indiana. Okay, they'll give you five grand to move there. They'll give you a season of free golf at two golf courses. No oh, thanks. Cash equivalent, please. Coffee with the mayor. Well, thanks, cash, uh, cash equivalent, please. Fifteen grand. Fifteen grand is cash equivalent. Sweet. Fifteen grand worth of perks. Coffee with the mayor. Uh huh. Nice. Whoa. That's more I'm getting here. <laughs> Kentucky. They're offering money to move down there. What part? It's Confederate it, money, but it, it, uh, <laughs> it says CSA on the bottom. Kentucky currently million. <laughs> they have eight cities and towns offering generous relocation packages to recruit new workers. Many offer five grand cash, cash, along with perks like, you know, discounts on child care, free monthly delivery of eggs. What? Oh, yeah. They're flush with eggs. Guys, hmm. what do we do with all these eggs? Oh, I know. Let's pay people to move here with, with eggs. the eggs. Nice. <laughs> with eggs. Clean us your genius. <laughs> Garrett says West Virginia is doing that to deepen the gene pool. I get it. Yeah. We need some new blood here. Got to do something. <laughs> That's probably why Kentucky's doing it. <laughs> uh, Michigan, they would like you to move there. Never been. Always wanted to go. Michigan has its moments, for sure. There's some cool towns up in there. If you're up there during like a nice season. Scott Grand goes up there all the time. Porch Lake is awesome. Yeah, it's really like pretty, Caribbean pretty clear places. water. Crazy. Aquamarine, it's oh, weird. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. I think Detroit's still on one of its Grand bounces. Rapids is a good town. Yeah, Grand Rapids is fun. Where does uh, it, Scott always goes to where? New Haven or Grand Haven? Yeah, Grand Something Haven. Haven. On one of the big lakes. Or is everything on Michigan? <laughs> I don't know. Is everything in Michigan along a big lake? I think so. <laughs> I think wherever you go in Michigan, a big lake is nearby. And know. and finally, Alaska is offering incentives to move there. Yeah, they've they've always done that. It's fifteen k, right? It's per, but it's per year. Well, no. So, so Alaska, which is which has the third smallest population in the U.S., gives their residents a yearly payment from something called the permanent fund dividend. Uh, so they get a little over thirty two hundred bucks every year. Every year, just, just so they'll get here. a check. Thanks for sticking around. Here's thirty two hundred. Yeah, thanks bucks. for staying. You survived it. Here's thirty two hundred dollars. And the the amount fluctuates based on government funding. In twenty twenty two. A residents got thirty two hundred bucks, but what, that amount what, was nearly cut in half in more recent years. So tell me something. What what happens? It's probably not on your sheet here. What happens? What happens if I have a second home up there, and as soon as the sun starts coming out, 
I'm there. I'm, I'm there in April. I'm there from April to October, but hell no. I bet, you have, to, I bet no. you have to be there for six months in a day. That's exactly what I'm saying. So so if you're there from April to Whatever October, residency. take your 3200 bucks and rent that thing out during the dark months, during the night, the long night. Because, guys, I've been up there for that. It's fun for like well, three I mean, days. Well, I mean, listen, certainly 3200 bucks is, you know, it's it's nice. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's not like. What's that buying you? Yeah. You're not getting rich. Uh-uh. I would not do well with the constant, like the season of just night. The darkness? Uh-uh. It's bizarre. Yeah, I'd go out of my mind. You know, we were up there as a rock band, so like, you know, we're living in the night anyway. Mm -hmm. But it was really weird getting up or, or you know, partying, and they tell you, hey, man, bar's closed at 5 a.m., you got to get out of here. And you walk out, and it's still dark. Mm -hmm. And then you go over here, and it's still That's dark. Weird. And then you go over here, and it's still dark. And then we were there another time in, uh, I want to say June, and uh, they have those black shades on all the hotel windows because it's light. It's light all the time. All that's the time. Be weird for kids. I've been watching like Night Country, the True Detective, the new season, and that's all in the dark. And then I watched um, what's the oh the movie uh, Midsummer where it's constantly light. Oh right. And I, having bo watching both of those different shows um, at the same time really freaked me out. <laughs> Boy, I'm, not, I'm not down it's with either of those things. You should go I, I and mean, experience I guess, it, though. I guess, I, I mean, you get used to it because that's where, you, I mean, that's where we live. But uh, as a kid, wouldn't it be weird to just be at school Super and it just weird. be dark all the time? I know. Think about it, your entire school mm. year is basically in the dark. <laughs> in the dark. It makes me feel cla uh, claustrophobic, sort of. I don't know what that feeling is. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but... For some reason, it gives me claustrophobia. I'll tell you what, the very first thing and within 10 minutes we, we discovered about the Alaskan people is they can drink. And I think it's because of that dark. Sure. Yeah, I think there's a high, there's a high inc you know, instance of alcoholism. They can drink, dude. That's all they do is drink. And, and, Up there in Alaska. And, and, and uh, By the way, anybody ever goes to Alaska, make sure that, that everywhere you go, you tell people you're not from there. Because they are so freaking friendly. We, we, we were... Uh, uh, threatened a couple times, like, hey, you know, you're you're on you're on my bar stool, like like classic movies. Threatened, yeah, yeah. And as soon as they find that you're not from there, they're your best friend. They're like, oh, oh let's oh, buy these guys a shot. Bar stool. I mean, they are the they nicest, shows up there? the nicest people ever mm. to anybody not from there. No, I was supposed to go up there with Kenny this year, but that ain't gonna happen. Uh, I was, <clears throat> he went last year and said it was awesome, so. Um, boy, we, uh... Wonderful people. They do, like, two or three week tours where you go through, like, Anchorage and Juneau yeah, yeah. and kind of just oh, go all that, around. I cool. bet it would be super fun. I would love to go. Uh, you know, my, my in-laws went on an Alaskan cruise. They said it was great. Uh, although we, our buddy Captain Jim went on an Alaskan cruise and said he hated it. <laughs> he so. hated it. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was the worst thing he's ever done. It was the worst thing. What a waste. <laughs> he did say that. If you go up there, there's a place in Anchorage called, uh, Chilkoot Charlie's. And it's the wildest place you've ever been. It's like this weird spread out bar, but it's like six different bars. And they're all kind of connected, and most of it's indoors. Um, but like each bar kind of has its own thing going on and will hire a different band. So there's like six different bands playing in this place that doesn't look much bigger than like a bar here, but it's split into mm. six different mm. places. And it's wild, mm. dude. You got to go. Hey, remember earlier this week we were talking about that school in Oklahoma that got... Uh that got in the news because they had kids licking peanut butter off oh, uh, yeah. toes. Can I ask real quick, though, before we start talking about licking toes? Yeah. <laughs> Again? If you had to choose between the midsummer or night country, what are you picking? All, oh, always again? day or always night? Always day. Yeah, I'm going always day. I'll think. Uh, always day I'll and then blackout out. shades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, that would freak me out equally. Well, it was weird. I we need the cycle, man. So yeah, I think I might take rhythm. Yeah, I just take it all night. I think I might take the night country, dude. Oh, I can oh. for that. I can pretend the dark. I can't. I'll pretend lean the into light. my depression and get real weird and artistic. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Although the, um, I need the serotonin from the sun, so I need that. Yeah, everybody's been, yeah. everybody's going to be point. vitamin D deficient. Yeah, oh, God, it's a good point. I mean, lots of cool songs and pieces will be written in the dark, but. I just uh, feel weird sun. going outside at midnight. It's like midday sun. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure it's night that and it's cold. Me. Like it's cold. It sounds miserable. It is cold. Well, yeah, I mean, really, really <clears> weather me withstanding. Out. Just light or dark. Yeah. All light I or all dark. I'll just take light. All light. I think I'd find it equally off-putting. Yeah. Especially if I'm an Alaska dude. Because yeah, you it, think? 
If you know you're surrounded by the most beautiful countryside on the earth has can't to see offer, it. and you can't see it, <laughs> this is the stupidest thing ever. Dude, there's a mountain up there. There is? <laughs> yeah. Trust me, it's <laughs> up there. For it. Yeah. I mean, you got to take vitamin D uh, supplements. Yeah. No. Well, what am go, I going to do with all my sunglasses? And you got to go out in the dark at 2 I p.m. Love my I love my sunglasses. To go buy those vitamins. On the ice. On the ice. Oh, by the way, yeah, don't that. mess with the moose. Right. They're trying to kill you, too. Everything out here is yeah, trying no to kill thanks. you because it's the size of a polar bear. Mm. Yeah, nah. Nah, Alaska's not for me. You can keep your money. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. God, we if everything's trying to kill me, I'd like to see it a few I'll hundred yards you, away. I don't even think I want to go up there. <laughs> it's not even a place I want to visit. Alaska? Yeah. Dude, you nah. cheat yourself. It, it's a different nah. planet. You landed on a different planet. In an iceberg, getting eaten by a polar bear. No, oh, you, you have do a it. choice. Night country. You have a choice. Hawaii or Alaska. Please. What yeah. season for Alaska, though? Doesn't matter. It does. It totally does. You can go to one. It's the most. Both are the most beautiful places. You in You go country. to one place, Alaska or Hawaii. I'm still going to Hawaii, but yeah. I, I'm go if I ever go to Hawaii, I'm Don't not coming Alaska back. Don't tell Alaska that. It's the best. I'm not coming back. It's, like, I already it's know paradise. It's how true I paradise. Roll. And. I'm not coming back. So. Why? Yeah, I'm going to move in with Shep Gordon. It's going to be cool. All right. You've been I'm going to move in with Dog no. the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, me and him are going to go. I'm going to move to Hawaii and become a bounty hunter and work for the dog. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. a maid, and that's cool. <laughs> I'm going to put feathers on my hair, hang out with Dog. Sweet. Yeah. If I could go off the grid Get a leather anywhere, vest. I'd go off the grid in Hawaii. Yeah. I'm going to get a leather tight. vest, bear, bear mace, and me and Dog are going hunting. Hell yeah. I can live off pineapples, man. Whew. Yeah, dude. All right. Pineapple Fish. diet. Oh, yeah. Eat the sea. Let's go. Yeah, I want to talk about... Uh, where Willie and Chris Christopherson live. They moved to they live, they live in Maui, don't they? What are we all doing so. here on the mainland? Let's go. I don't know. I like Missouri. <laughs> Roll my eyes in the back. Nah. 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 All right, I want to talk about school for a second. I don't want to get off this topic okay. because uh, I was looking at this Instagram post and uh, it was in the thread about the... The uh, Oklahoma, like Lick and Toes thing. Uh -huh. If you didn't hear earlier this week, like uh, it, Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma uh, City School, it's a high school. Uh, high school, you know, <laughs> caught some heat. And they were doing a charity event, and I guess uh, students were licking peanut butter off of other students' feet. Mm -hmm. They say no faculty was involved. Okay. <laughs> Come to find out, another school in Oklahoma did the same thing. Oh, jeez. No now way. they're getting heat. And uh, I don't know, if, if that happened at your school when you were in high school, would it be such a big deal? Probably not because nobody would know about it. Yeah. You know, it blows up on, you know, listen, creepy now is creepy then. <laughs> well. But I feel like there was some stuff that we did back in the day or that school did back in the day. That would never fly today. Like what? Never fly today. So there was an Instagram post about a woman. Who, she's 30 years old. She was telling about how she was uh, in elementary school. And if you were student of the month, the principal would take you to get ice cream on his motorcycle. <laughs> cool principal. Yeah. Cool principal. That would never fly now. Yeah, that would never, never fly, fly now. <laughs> like we did. No helmet. We, so we did. Uh, I remember we went to the Statue of Liberty. For a class trip. Mm -hmm. In elementary school. Mm -hmm. We got off the bus and we just wandered off. And the teacher was like, well, I'll be back by 3 o'clock for the ferry. Yeah, I remember some field trips <clears throat> like that. Just, you're you're on your own. Yeah. Like you are on, I'm, I'm eight. Right. I've told you the story. On your own. I bought four knockoff watches. Swear to God. You did from a guy's jacket? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I was eight. As a kid. As a kid. Damn, I'm dude. I'm rolling in that good money. watch money at eight. I mean, come on. They were really cheap. I think my parents probably gave me 20 bucks. Hey, kid, your father wants one of these. It, I remember it turned green. Like, it turned my skin green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Top quality. Immediately. But an eight-year... Can you imagine an eight... Imagine? Yeah. A, a kid from Chesterfield being driven down... All right, we're going to visit the Arch... For a class trip, mm -hmm. they drop you off. The bus drops you off on the arch grounds, and the teacher goes, "All right, be back by be back by one." That's how and they the did kids it. just do whatever. Yeah, it's awesome. That would oh, never fly. The best. I told you the story about being in grade school down in West Frankfurt, and they took us down into a coal mine 
30 kids into a coal mine underground, the shaft elevator, pure darkness. They're not doing that anymore. It's no. a safety issue. Somebody said uh, their elementary school principal would pull loose teeth. You would go into his office, have him pull your loose tooth, and he'd give you a lollipop, and that was it. <laughs> Dang. Would that fly today? Was he a dentist? No. He was the school principal. <laughs> Well, that was kind of nice. I, I mean, I, I needed help getting some of my teeth out because I was afraid when I was little to pull them out. So, I mean, if your parents aren't there, the school nurse or principal pulling your teeth out. I don't know. That's, that's not as bad to me as the motorcycle thing. I feel like before they did that nowadays, they would call the parent and yeah. say, hey, can we call it, pull your kids too? Sure. Not you go to the principal's office, pulls it out, and you go back. Um our high school music music teacher took us to see a band at a bar. Yeah. Right on. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. We went to a bar to see a band. <laughs> That's actually pretty good education. <laughs> if you think about it. Our That's music teacher was in a bar band called the Jungle Dogs. And their own, their famous song is... Jump up for cold beer. <laughs> and we used to sing it in music class in grade school. We had children singing, Jump up for cold beer. It was like kind of a Mike do you Ward. Think, do you think that would fly now? No. No. Oh, probably not. What's the perfect Mother's Day gift? If you were in art class and you did you did the ceramics, mm -hmm. you made ashtrays. Oh yeah. That's not a big deal. It's not a no, it's, a it's jewelry not it's not a big deal. Dish. But a handmade ashtray, I, I was cranking those things out. <laughs> Good for Roseanne. I, <laughs> I, was, <clears throat> I mean, I remember doing a... I was cranking homemade, you know, handmade ashtrays out. Roseanne didn't smoke. <laughs> I remember the football team doing like a... I don't remember if it was like a pep rally situation or what, but everyone came out in silk boxers. And that was the plan for some reason. Basically, we're children in our underwear. You know, we're underage guys yeah. in our underwear. A pedo's dream, huh? Yeah, and it was like the Paisley silk boxers yeah. that had a moment in like the mid to late '90s, probably. And I just, you know, just a very thin layer of silk between us and exposing ourselves to the student body. <laughs> I don't remember why we did it. I think it was like a sexy legs contest for dudes. Weird. And it was part of like. Pep Rally Week. What was that called? Spirit Week. Spirit, Spirit week. week. There you go. And nobody had a problem with it. In fact, I remember like some of the female teachers like wooing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Raphael like getting Wilson. the other, getting the the other ladies excited. I remember being in high school and during Spirit Week. I think I was a sophomore, and they would give you these kind of you know different feats that you had to do with the other classes. And one of them was you had to put a toothpick in your mouth. Yeah. And then your partner, usually of the opposite sex, would have a toothpick. And you had to put a cert or a lifesaver, and you had to get it from your mouth to the other person's mouth through the Ew. toothpick. And you had to, like, touch them and, like, yeah. you know, go down, and then you're up. And then, you know, it was like yeah, this yeah, weird yeah. kind of your... erotic yeah. thing. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody asked, was the name of the band the Jungle Dogs? Yeah. <laughs> Jungle Dogs. They're My, finally getting the radio due. Jungle Dogs. Dude, I would, if they were in the thing somewhere, if they were in our programming somewhere, I would lose my mind. His name was Mike Ward, and he would come in so hungover, dude, to teach music class. Like, I'm talking like, like close-up Ren and Stimpy bloodshot eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I I remember Jungle he Dogs was like, had a gig he had last night. I remember he had the shakes one day teaching class, and he dropped a glass Dr. Pepper bottle. And I was young, dude. I was probably first grade, maybe... You know that impulsive stuff you do as a kid? And this very much goes with my personality. The glass shattered, and he's like, ah, nobody touch it. And I immediately picked up a piece. Immediately <laughs> yeah, reached yeah, out. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, he didn't get touch it out of his mouth before I was already holding the piece. And he, like, freaked out and picked me up and took me out in the hallway and, like, had me up against the wall yelling what? at me. And I remember the principal had to be like, hey, Mike, calm down. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. I was, like, freaked out by it. But I think he was just, like, super hungover. Uh, He's a good dude. Okay, how about this? And I had a seventh grade science teacher, okay? The teacher would walk around with a beaker full of mercury 
and told us to stick our fingers in it. Oh, no. To feel how dense it was. And then he gave us our own little penny-sized drop of mercury to play with at our desks. Whoa. You know, I feel so like, we could see how it moved. I feel like we had loose mercury on a table. I'm sure we were poisoned that day. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Do they still dissect animals and stuff, like the frogs yes. and the pigs in high schools? Yeah, my kids are doing something like that. There's we did. Uh, yeah, my my uh, disgusting at the same time. Uh, my son did that. I think this it's. Year. I think it's important. We Shh. we did. Um, what we do? Sheep eyes or cow eyes first, and then we did fetal pigs, and then we did cats. That we, we did a frog. What? Cats were our um, was my final. Like a cat? Whoa! Like a cat? Like one a, cat or many cats? Everybody had cats. I had a what? cat. You had a cat. I she had a cat. We just did frogs. Yeah, I did frogs and pigs. We did. Well, yeah, we did frogs in middle school. I'm talking about high school. Right. In high school, we did a. Uh, well, in middle school, you start with worms. Remember, you do worms and then and then frogs and something else. In high school, we did the eyes, we did the fetal pigs, and we did cats for the final. The cat, my the cats, son just did the frog. The cat thing was kind of cool. As a freshman. It was yeah, horrible because I was a, you know, a cat lover. But at the same time, it was like, by that point, you were kind of like trained to almost... Not you, see it that way. Yeah, you were basically doing like an autopsy. And I, and I remember um, it was a part of the final, and you got bonus points if you could figure out how the cat died. Hmm. Oh. Part of it was like trying to figure out, and sure enough, like yeah, but when we opened the stomach, there were worms throughout the stomach. So, did your teacher give you mercury at your desk? I Nowadays, if a thermometer breaks, they clear the school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do remember some sort of thermometer on a table being broken on purpose, and I rem I remember th something about this like. A gelatinous piece of metal moving around. Yeah, he gave us like a little drop full of mercury, and we rolled it around. And I don't like the cat thing. Well, I'm sorry. I don't either, man. I we never feel, did a cat. I feel like that's a bridge Is that in the Limburg School District? Yeah, yeah bro. Man. Limburg we, we did number fetal one pigs, and I remember reason. being like... Well, I'm just saying, if there's a, somebody teetering on the serial killer line, we're like, hey, the wind blows the wrong way, this guy's going. Giving him a cat. Yeah, you know, like a domestic pet to dissect feels like you're kind of pushing them in one direction. Yeah, we got. A, I remember our, no. the frog came in formaldehyde. Yeah, oh, this wasn't. Terrible. And you had to pin it. Everything. You had to yeah. pin it to the. Uh, They're not killing. We cats like worked for up high to school, it. I remember right? this. I think we started with a starfish. Did you guys do the starfish? Mm -mm. Uh, I don't remember that. Starfish. We did, yeah, we had like a starfish first because you would like dissect all of the limbs were the same, and we would. And then we like worked up to. Yeah, I think I, I do remember the pig worm. was our final, and I the worm. I remember the worm. The worm, yeah, that's the first thing you do. God, that smell! I can yeah. still sm somewhere in my nostril that yeah. smell still exists. That formaldehyde. If you smell it, you'll pig. go right back to that. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Brian Rosenberger, by the way. I know we don't do shout outs, but smartest kid in the school got teamed up with him in biology. Dissection partner. Right on. There was one f set of footprints in the sand, brother, and you were carrying me, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you. Wherever you are, I appreciate you, because yeah. that was I was going to get a B minus at best, <laughs> and you carried us all the way to A plus. This dude was on it. Somebody I wonder what he's doing now. Somebody just tweeted, uh, I think learn getting her teeth pulled by the principal was a little different since it was happening in high school, not elementary school. Yeah, yes. it's true. You were a little baby I teeth. I had baby teeth. I had... Baby teeth until freshman year, and yes. All right, here's another thing I don't think would fly. I had she sent a, me a photo the other day. I had uh, an English Proof. teacher. First of all, the English teacher used to curse out kids for being noisy in class, and if that didn't work, he would throw the blackboard eraser at us. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Davis did that. And oh, yeah. We had a guy do that. There would be, like, chalk marks on kids' backs. Oh, yeah. Same, same thing. And this dude, actually, this dude was kind of famous for that. And he was really dry to kind of talk like Ben Stein. He was a really nice guy, but he would get angry in a snap. And he would throw erasers. And he had one that was, do you guys remember the one that was like this big? And it kind of looked soft on the top. But it was a big, giant eraser thing on the bottom. It was a, it was a big one. It was, like, it was like this long. It was like tan on the top. It wasn't like the old, you know, almost baseball-sized ones you could yeah. throw. This thing was big, and he would chuck that thing. And that, that was a weapon, man. Yeah, man. I mean, Mr. Geiger was our coach slash algebra teacher, and he had a paddle with holes drilled in it. <laughs> that if he, and it was like his goal to get everybody. 
And you signed his paddle. That was like your rite of passage. You autographed it. If, if you got, got you. hit with it? If you got you. Oh, no. We, and nobody paddled. There were no paddlings. But no. The Could you imagine was, today, though? If, no. If your kid came home and was like, Mr. Geiger took his custom paddle with holes drilled in it for less wind resistance on the downswing and then paddled me in front of all my friends and then made me sign the board. Like how fast you'd be down at yeah. that school. But like there was well, a time yeah. when your parents were like, well, what'd you do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, uh, you know, they wouldn't automatically jump to, oh my God, the teacher needs to be fired. No. It's always, what did you do to deserve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think there are teachers that still throw erasers? At Probably kids? The cool not. teachers. Could be. No. Yeah, the cool teachers. The cool teachers that are like, just try me, you know? <laughs> but the, you, but you gotta have some cares. serious tenure yeah. to pull that off. But you'd, I mean, you'd be in the hallway and you'd see somebody with an eraser mark on their back. And you know that that person pissed off the English teacher that day. Yes. And he was quick. He was quick to launch that eraser. Mm -hmm. And he was deadly accurate. You guys had a weird time. I didn't have anything like that going on. I had great teachers that never hit or... <laughs> I wasn't saying it's bad teachers. Yeah, but all Mercury on our desk. Weird guy. Never happened to girls. No, I mean, there were boys paddled. in my class, too. It never happened to anyone. They got rid of paddling right when I was getting too big for it, which pissed me off a little bit. But I guess, you know, somebody's got to be the last crop. Somebody's yeah. asking, Moon, if you had it, Mr. Burger? Mr. Burger? Nah. It's, no. This guy had a uh, longer name. Uh, Peter said the Jungle Dogs are on Spotify. Right yeah, on. dog. <laughs> Mr. Burger. Wait a second. I mean, they were a big band. Science guy? Nicotine gum? Maybe I did have that guy. Never mind. Christopher's asking, Moon, Mr. Burger? <laughs> uh, that's I not can't the, believe that's they not did the one cats. I'm that's of. wild. Oh, yeah. No, that was in biology. That was like a junior year or something, or maybe sophomore year. It was like a basic biology class. Hmm. I get Fo it for the science. Football purpose. coach was the, uh, was, the, was the teacher, too. Greatest, easiest. I mean, I don't think I did anything in that class except for cut open animals. Like, the rest of the time, I was just sitting there hanging out with my buddy Steve. And he would come in, and a football player would come up to the, to the door, and he'd be like, oh, excuse me, guys. And he'd go talk football for the whole class, and we'd just goof <laughs> off. <laughs> Somebody, and then, uh, hey, here's some frozen cats. Y'all cut them open and figure it out. Somebody said their, uh, their sixth grade teacher would take three kids every Friday at McDonald's. In her car for lunch. That Whoa. happened in grade school. I remember like, And yeah. she was cool as hell and she smoked during the drive and everything. Wow. Yeah. I remember the McDonald's <laughs> teachers. They'd either bring it in or take you there. Really? Mm -hmm. Whoa. It it's upsetting. wild to think that yeah, I can, they would I would never allow school. my child in the car. I wouldn't put my child in the car with some relatives, much less with some strange teacher. I don't know. Let's say let's say a teacher contacted us and like, hey, we want to take your kids out to lunch. No. I don't know if I'd be... I, no. Like if why, they're going with other kids? Why is that necessary? Yeah. Why would you do that? Why do you need to do that? Why Bring the lunch to them. First, I would say why. And what are your driving qualifications? Nobody's asking that. Do you have a passenger endorsement? I mean, obviously, they, I, I, it's not happening now. <clears throat> well, now you can just Uber Eats. Yeah. We're yeah. Uber Eatsing the McDonald's to the classroom. Yeah. There's no but if you went home as a kid and you went, oh, Miss Sullivan took me to uh, McDonald's today. I don't think. It, would your parents care? Probably not. My parents? Yeah. Back when you were in back when you were in elementary oh, school, man, it's I don't, hard to say. I guess probably not. Probably not. I don't think my parents. Probably would, not. They didn't yeah. care that I was being physically abused. <laughs> I don't think they were going to care that someone got me a happy. Yeah. yeah, true that. They were even happy to hear it. <clears throat> Did your I got some nuggies? Parents ever bring you any fast food to the lunchroom? No. No way. Never. Jill did. That's a never. She brought it in her Firebird with T-tops. My parents were teachers. God, Jill's so cool. My parents are teachers, so they're, you know, they're out teaching. Oh, yeah. oh no, my daughter is jealous of the kids that, like, their parents bring them Chick-fil-A. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my son will text me every you once in a while and be like, hey, Dad. No. I I already, I've already established we're never doing that. Oh, do it one time before it's over. Last week, my son, remember when we were sitting here and my son texted me while I'm on air, like, you know what I, you know what I do. You know what time I'm here. And he texted me, hey, Dad, can you bring up some Lion's Choice? I said, what? Who? who did you mean this text for someone else? <laughs> Who, what do you think? Oh, yes, what? my other dad. <laughs> Why would I do that? Well, they put a stop, I know, in, in the middle school for kids ordering DoorDash. <laughs> yeah, it was like 9.30 a.m. and he asked that me. Like, so kids cool would be ordering DoorDash, that. and they had to put out, like, a, a statement going, your kids cannot do this. Yeah. By the way, happy birthday, son. It's my son's birthday. Oh, happy boy. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, son. No Lion's Choice for you. No. <laughs> oh, you birthday. should bring him Lion's Choice today. Oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, dude. It'd be a nice thing. That would be cool. That would be a nice thing. That would be cool. You should do that. You're right. I'll do that. Do that today. Nobody tell him. 
Actually, don't tell the boy. I'm going to have to tell him. I don't, I don't know how to get don't it to him. Don't buy lunch, boy. I don't know how to get it to him. I guess you just drop that off at the office. Yeah. Did well, that now, now you have to have 35 forms of ID to get into the schools. Right. Well, in elementary school, I used to take it up there and eat lunch with him sometimes. Remember? Just show him your Hubbard key card. Hey, look, I'm in radio. Get you in anyway. I'm fine. Press credentials. Here's my pass. Uh, somebody said uh, on, on our birthdays at school, the janitor would spank us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I kind of remember that whole, like, one to grow on thing, like the pretend spankings. I do kind of remember that. That's so weird, dude. The paddle was so deeply ingrained in the everyday life of a student, and the physical abuse that you would endure in school was just so normalized that it became part of the fun. Yeah. Shout out to my buddy Matt Grammer, by the way, who farted on Miss Funk's paddle when we all got in trouble in class, and he could fart on command, and the first swat, he ripped the big one on her paddle, and she cried and ran out of the room, and none of us, I didn't get it. It's the only time I dodged a bullet. Wow. He did it for us, and he volunteered to go first, so good on him. Wherever yeah. you are, buddy, you got three of us out of capital punishment. So he farted when he got paddled. Corporal punishment, whatever. Oh, yeah, dude. So he, he got paddled. He on farted. our backswing, he just ripped a big one. And then she was like, already, I think she already didn't have a lot of confidence in her swing. Ah. And then it just, dude. She was it the, an older she woman? She had the yips, dude. Gave her the yips. Couldn't cook. She couldn't. Couldn't, couldn't keep it together? Yeah, yeah, she's an older woman. She's cool, though. It was, she have a good, she have a good, like, stance and form. And Yeah, she, like, she was kind of the one that if you were going to get paddled, you wanted it to be her because it didn't hurt that bad. She didn't commit. I don't think she really liked doing it, which is a good thing. She's a good person. She didn't like yeah, well. punishing students with. But it was funny, man. <laughs> yeah, some of this stuff you can't uh, you can't get away with now. Somebody said the third grade teacher had a whole uh, had the the whole class camp in her backyard after the last day of school, and then took them all to see the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie in the theater. That's tight. <laughs> That's tight. That is. That's awesome. I, my third grade teacher had, I went and like, stayed all night at her house with her grandson in the summers, I remember. He was about up my age. I guess maybe it was different, too, when you're a small town. Everybody kind of, like, she was also my parents' teacher. Like, everybody kind of, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, she taught your parents, too? Uh, yeah. She was around. You know Did that? you go to the same school as your parents? Yeah. Wow. I had teachers in high school that taught my mom and dad. Whoa. That's pretty neat. Yeah. That is pretty neat. Yeah. I get that. Small town stuff. Yeah. So maybe it's different because yeah. of that. Right. Hey, listen. Too much fun. We got to take a break because we got to get to business. Okay. Up after the break, ladies and gentlemen, Craigslist Freak of the Week. That's right. Three brand new ads for you. Learn's going to read them. You're going to name them and you'll vote on them. But first, uh, today's Team Rose member of the day is brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. St. Louis is home for Blues Hockey from Fenton, Missouri. Emma Stafford is out. Yeah, Emma. Oh, I threw a T in there accidentally. It's Safford, not Stafford. 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 Emma Safford has been a racial listener since uh, she moved to St. Louis back in 2015. Always starts her day with the with the show. Makes sure to check, uh, catch up on the podcast in the afternoon. Loves the dynamic of everybody's personalities and learns female perspective being part of the daily conversations along with Rafe's humor, my short temper, and Moon's devil's advocate takes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Emma loves the new iteration of the show and is grateful that the universe has gifted St. Louis the perfect morning show. Wow. Whoa, damn. What a compliment. Yeah. Emma Safford from Fenton, Missouri is our teamers member today. Get super sweet teamers. Remember the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up. Get the grape nuts away from me. <laughs> Look at it, dude. It's been sitting here soaking for the entire Moon's first offering grape nuts and it's segment. Still dry. An hour. Don't it's say oh, no. soaking. It's cardboard. Don't Look like at it. That. Wet cardboard. Oh, yeah. Uh, 1057thepoint.com slash team riz. All right, as I mentioned, Craig's this freak of the week. <laughs> Next, need you out there in the chat room. Please uh, name these freaks for us. Again, we'll vote via Twitter. At R-I-Z-Z Show. It's 702. It is Thursday. It's the Riz Show presented over the fast lane. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.racewaycom We got a lane block due to a stalled vehicle 44 westbound at Kings Highway. Your point forecast scattered rain is possible. High of 59 right now. It's 45 at the point studio. 
twice. Because Back to the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz the Socials. At R-I-Z-Z Show, your emails, Riz Show at 1057thepoint.com. Need you in that chat room for the Craigslist Freak of the Week, which is coming up here in just a moment. Uh, later on, we'll have a couple people here from uh, Schlafly Stout and Oyster Festival, which starts tomorrow. Yeah. It's tomorrow and Saturday. We got uh, two shuckers coming in. I can't wait. And uh, Kara, who is the uh, Schlafly Bottle Works General Manager. I guess we'll be shucking oysters. In, yeah. I've we'll never be done shucking that. oysters in here. It's going to get smelly. Oh, poor Donnie. I know. Somebody should tell him. No. <laughs> you can do it. No. Yeah. Rafe, I think it's your turn. Yeah. Tell Donnie? To tell, tell Donnie. Donnie. Like, hey. I'd rather tell Donnie than eat the oysters. What yeah. do you mean? You're I not thought you like oysters? oysters. I got a raw shellfish allergy. Dog. <laughs> Only today, though, right? <laughs> Only on Thursdays? That's right. <laughs> You got a flight later. I could imagine you would have. Not, I'm not down in like 30 raw oysters and hopping on a th noon flight. They're bringing, they're bringing dozens. Dozens. You give me some Rockefeller, I might get uh, in Oysters on it. Rockefeller, yeah. Oyster Fest is so cool. Hey, what is I've it? never been. It's If you're an oyster fan and you love Schlafly beer, you got to go. I mean, it's, it's Rose Rose. All these people from all over the country come in to bring their oysters and they're all different, and they have all the fixins for you, and all the oh, different yeah, ways yeah. that you I want. Oh yeah, I might go Saturday. That's awesome. It is so much fun. Yeah, my wife is psyched. Yeah, psyched. tomorrow five to nine, Saturday eleven a.m. to nine, and it's going to be a bottle works this year. Oh, nice. Usually it's downtown. Usually it's downtown. But is there a soccer match uh, this weekend? Uh, the match this weekend should be away. Hang on, let me let me, let me check. I have so many dates in my head right now. I think they moved it out to. Maplewood because they moved of, it for some reason. I don't know if it's. I think soccer, because though. of soccer. No, nah, this year, uh, this week is in Austin. Oh, they're in Austin. Mm -hmm. I don't was, know. We'll ask them. It was something, but it's all happening. But at I Battle think Works. it does have something to do with the soccer. It does. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, I don't know. We'll talk to them. All I know is that Bottleworks spot is awesome, dude. They're bringing four dozen oysters. <laughs> what the hell? I'm for ready. you, only you need to eat them. I, I listen. I do enjoy a good oyster, honestly. Hey, what, 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 what do we mean, Oyster Rockefeller? What does that mean? Uh, they're cooked. Oh. Cooked, baby. Like, they usually put, like, uh, it's like, isn't it cream spinach? Mm. Oh, Some, yeah. Yeah. Some kind of... Uh, it's like Parmesan toppings. They spinach. bake them in the shell. They bake them in the shell, dude. Whereas when you have them raw, you just... You just slurp you them. You shuck them and slurp them. Or, or don't you squeeze them on a... Is it lemon juice or something? Oh, you could do... Horseradish. Horseradish, oh. a little cocktail sauce. Basque. I hope they bring Tabasco. all that. <laughs> You're so excited. I am so excited. <laughs> You're like, oh. When we were talking about this on Monday or whatever, I, I immediately went to Peacemaker. That's the last place I had oysters. So good. And we're getting... these. They're expensive, dude. Like, oysters are... Expensive. Here's what they're bringing. Four dozen oysters, East Coast and West Coast. Lemon slices plus fixings. Yes. Nice. Gloves, shucker knives for shuckers. I've never shucked. <laughs> Me neither. Ice for travel and display. Uh, eight plates for oysters and Schlafly beer. God bless Damn. Me. Nice. That's yeah. happening today. I've only had them once, and it was in Australia, and... Um, I got super, super sick afterwards, and not from the oysters at all. Um, it was the flu. I had a horrible flu. That's how oh, I had a bird flu. I was in the hospital and some other stuff. But, like, it ruined the experience because I was already not – I was not feeling well, so I didn't even get to enjoy my dinner. We were at, like, the most high-end place on the beach. There's waves crashing underneath the, the, and you're the deck. The toilet. And they're, like, and I mean, diarrhea. the whole tour was just like, oysters are the best, and they were so incredible, but I just wasn't – I was already sick. Yeah, listen, if you got the flu, the last thing you want is uh, snotty oysters. Right. And I still remember enjoying them. I just, I, I never got to just enjoy them like I'm supposed to enjoy them. I listen, was sick I, from touring. And I think some people, even when they, like, hear oyster like a raw oyster, they would, like, recoil. But they're, yeah, but they're good. Yeah, they say the same thing about sushi and all that kind of stuff. You got to try them. Once you try it, you go, oh, my gosh, this is spectacular. Nah, nah, dog. You're not going to try them? No, no. <laughs> I'm surprised. surprised. You'll shock though. though. You'll shock though, right? I'm surprised in you right now. Why? I don't know. Because Mr. Adventure. Yeah, I, you, I feel Will like you shock? Has a chance. Middle name is danger to me, so. All right, I'll suck some raw oysters. Yeah. Oh, just like one. that. Do one. I'll do one. I'm All not right. doing 12. 
I just don't want to do 12 and then get on a Southwest flight at noon. <laughs> <laughs> right, the lightning. Get the, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> the oyster sweats. It's going to be great. Yeah, Ooh, something, something, yeah, something hit me. Ah, I think it's just texture. Yeah, sure. It, it doesn't like, I'm not, it doesn't make me like repulse. It's just, it's fine. You're like sucking snot out of a, an oyster, of a shell. It's You're basically ocean just, snot. we should probably light a candle in here too. Ocean snot. I love we it. We have a candle. Right. Oh, I'm excited. And I got some matches. I'm All excited. Right. This, but I'll do the, it. The first time was technically the first time. This will be my real first time. Let me fix it up for you. No hot sauce. Uh, yeah, let, let Lauren fix it up for you. All right. I trust you. This is, All right, be, this is a big step in our relationship. It is. Let me tell you something. Time for the Craigslist Freak of the Week. All right, so we got three brand new ads for you. Uh, Lauren will read the ads uh, for us. You guys will name each of the ads. And then at the end, we'll give our endorsements. And then you guys will vote. For your favorite freak, one of these ads moving on to the Freak of the Year playoffs, which will begin around August. Yeah, it's I last think year. I it started last year, August. So we are in, oh, we are in Canada this week. All three ads from Canada. So learn, shall we? Please. Let's get into it. Craig's Freak of the Week. It's ad number one. Jump me, man for man. Oh, I'm sorry. Man for men. 25 years old, Toronto. I'm not cool enough to be in a gang. People don't really want to be around me much. That's okay. I've come to accept that. I am intrigued and a bit turned on by the idea of a gang initiation. Looking for a group of bikers. Looking for a group of biker-looking hairy bears to jump me in. I'll be in the alleyway behind my apartment building on Saturday night. You fellas come out of the shadows and initiate me into your gang. No weapons, just fists and feet. I won't put up much a fight. At the end of it all, I want to be left naked, bruised and bleeding. If any one of you fellas wants to have your way with me, go for it. Toilet play is on the table if you're into it. I certainly am. You guys can leave if you want or come back to my place and help nurse me back to health. I'm good either way. Totally up to you. Please email me back before Thursday so I can get you the coordinates to the alleyway. Okay. There you go. There is the first ad. Hmm. This is a guy that wants to be initiated into a gang. Just basically have the crap kicked out of him behind uh, behind his apartment building into the alleyway. Damn. Fist, feet, toilet play, all good. If you're into it, he's into it. And, uh, yeah, leave him, leave him naked and uh, bruised and bleeding. And if you want to come back up to this place, cool. Cool. If not, totally up to you. Can bounce out of there. Huh. Any <laughs> <laughs> We're all just quiet. Hmm. Any uh any comments on <laughs> comments nah, on this? I think that's pretty good. I think we got our name too. Oh, do we? Yeah. I mean there's 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 a lot of them that I'm seeing that are all great names, but we've used them before. I think we've used Peter Gabriel before. Yes, we have, yeah. Um, Gary Abusey. Yeah, yeah, we've used that. Um Tyler Hurton is pretty good, but I think Forrest Jumped is uh, pretty much Forrest the Jump. winner for I me. like Gnarly Davidson. I think that's kind of fun, too. Yeah, but Forrest Jump, I mean, this is... Forrest Jumped. Forrest Jumped? Yeah, like he wanted, he was to be jumped, right? Or maybe maybe Forrest Jump. Maybe that's Forrest fine. Jump. Whatever you want. Rafe? You're the boss. What do you think? I like them both. I like Gnarly Davidson. I like uh, Forrest Jump. Let's do Forrest Jump. Forrest Jump. Forrest Forrest Jump. Okay. Let's be honest, this is not a finalist contender anyway, so it's all good. I like the name. How do you know? This guy ain't beating some of the ones we've heard these last couple months. Okay, okay, okay. He may move on today because I haven't may heard move the rest on today. of today. <laughs> all right, let's get on to ad number two. Learn coming at you. Bag me, daddy. Straight man for man, 54 years old, Toronto. <clears throat> I'm looking for a guy, but that doesn't make me gay. I'm a 54-year-old man that likes to take things to the edge. I want to be gagged and bagged, as in, put a bag over my head and help me pass out. This is not permission to kill me, only to help me get my <laughs> climax there forcefully. I am straight as an arrow and would be normally looking for a woman to do this, but I have found in my travels that women just don't have the stomach or the strength for it. Listen, guys... 
you don't get to do anything to my body. This is you strictly putting a bag over my head and holding it as I struggle to breathe, Joe, and then pass out. I usually wake up within five to 10 minutes and I'll be ready for round two. If you have a good upper body strength, that's a plus. I'll try to put, I'll try to pull you off, but you have to hang tough. Put bag in the subject line when you get back to me. No police. <laughs> no cops. No cops. No, hey, no cops. Uh, looking for a guy, but that doesn't make me gay, but yet you'll Joe in front of them as, as the guy puts mm. the bag over your head. Well, it sounds like he's just wanting like an upper body strength. I mean, you know, and I, yeah, plenty of men have upper you body strength. soft ladies strength. don't have the upper body yeah, strength. Yeah, soft either. ladies. <laughs> We just oh, can't uh, but, well, I mean, uh, there, are, there are, you know, meaty ladies out there. Oh, to, hell yeah, there are. Sure. That have the strength yes. to pull this off. Well, women have, we, our legs are stronger than mm -hmm. men. You know, isn't that the science? Women have tougher legs than dudes. And you guys have I'm, upper body strength. I'm imagining a schnooks bag over this guy's, you know, head. And somebody, guys behind just holding it there. Yeah. This guy's struggling and joeing. Wow. What a multitasker. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a guy that probably needs some therapy. What in your childhood caused this to be your fetish? Hmm. A lot of people that <laughs> do autoerotic asphyxiation. Well, we've lost a few celebrities that sure. way. David Carradine, legend of kung fu. Yeah, Poor Bill, Michael, Volume One and Two. Michael Hutchins, right? I, you know what they say? Allegedly. <clears throat> yeah, but they were hanging themselves in a in, in a closet with a belt. Yeah, it's terrible. I guess this is safer. I'll be honest with you. Somebody else. I guess you got somebody else in the room with you in case things go sideways. And you could bite through the bag, you know? Can you? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know how I know that. Can you? <laughs> You know, oh, we've we've had stories of people being like, uh, you know, like shrink wrapped, like or like saran wrapped, uh -huh. and people dying. Like, hey, saran wrap me to like a workbench. Yeah. And they're like suffocating because their lungs, their lungs can't fill, or they put the bag over their face, the saran wrap over their face. Very dangerous. What a dangerous game. Why isn't showing <laughs> just enough? What a dangerous I agree, game, Riz. <laughs> when showing doesn't game. do it for you, right? There's so many things that you can watch or read or hear. All right, and then it's over. You know, give me three minutes. It's over, it's and over. then you know, on with on with the day. Right. We'll take a nap, and that's it. Hmm. This is a whole thing. It's unnecessary. This is a whole thing. This seems a bit unnecessary. Mm. But I guess I'm not a sexual deviant. Well, let's not judge. Okay, We're you're not right. Not the yum. Okay. I see a lot of uh, Ian bags coming over. Yeah. A lot of Ian bags. <laughs> that might be that just might be the one. We do have a lot of options though. Okay, Bill Joe Baggins. <laughs> yeah, Bilbo Baggins, uh, Bill Joe Baggins, Bagger Vance, Baggy Gyllenhaal, Robin Hood, Baggy Smalls, Mick Bagger, Merle Baggard, uh, oh, Notor man. Notorious B.A.G. <laughs> Merle Baggard is pretty Choke great. Choke Norris. Should we do Merle Baggard? Yep. Yeah. I vote Merle. That's a good one. Uh, M E R L E. Yes. Oh yeah. And how would you spell bagger? <laughs> Somebody said Dwight choke him. Uh -huh, that's good. pretty good. It's not quite a choke. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Let's Dwight, ooh. B a g g a r d. Yeah. Baggard. Yeah. Dwight choke him. Ah, uh, Merle Baggard. All right, Merle Baggard. B a g g a r d. He's bagging him. But remember that. Remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we'll the have another choke yeah. Norris we'll and the, the other ones. Like, we'll have another choking one for sure. We see those. All take long. All right, and uh, finally. Ad number three, learn coming at you. Need a grandpa, a man for woman, 73 years old, Nova Scotia. Hi, ladies. Are you looking for a grandpa figure that will take care of you? I'm looking for a granddaughter that I can spoil. I would love to shower you with gifts. Whatever you want. Fancy jewelry, designer clothes, panties, <laughs> trips. Money isn't an issue. I'll even let you stay with me if you pass a background check. Looking to start this relationship straight away. The clock is ticking for me. Willing to drain the bank account for the right granddaughter. You have to call me grandpa at all times and act like my granddaughter in public. When we're alone, I may ask you to serve me sexually. That won't be a regular occurrence, though. I have a lot of fun toys to use. 
have very large breasts and a thin waist. Dark complexions are okay, just not too dark. But um, we've got to make this believable. Send pic. Okay. Racist grandpa. Cool. Uh. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh. What do you mean, make it believable? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I guess know if you're too dark, if you don't match his skin. Right. If you don't match his skin enough, it's not going to be like, that's not your granddaughter. That's not your granddaughter. That's not your granddaughter. <laughs> I will shower you with gifts. This is a sugar daddy Fancy situation. jewelry, designer clothes, panties and trips. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is a sugar daddy, sugar you know, sugar baby like, yeah. like situation. Yes. Uh, but you, you have to call him Gramps, Grandpa out in public, which is, you know. <sighs> Role playing at its most peak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's get some names for this freak. We got uh, Paw Paw Patrol. We got okay. Paw Paw Roach. But I think this one is it. Lady and the Gramp. Okay, there you go. Lady and the Gramp. Lady and the Gramp. Kind of has a name and a story all in it. one. I love it. It's a great name. All right, there are your three ads. <laughs> Moon, if you would activate the voting. Activated. Here's what we got. We got uh, Forrest Jump. Forrest Jump is the guy who, uh, he's not so tough, but he wants to be jumped in kind of uh, gang style. Nobody really wants to hang around with this guy at all, but he wants his ass kicked in an alley. Yeah, it's gang initiation style. Yeah. A uh, toilet play is on the table if you're into it. Let's let's not gloss over Forgot that. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Uh, then you got uh, Merle Baggard. <laughs> Merle <laughs> Baggard ain't gay, but he wants a guy with strength. Uh, to hold a bag over his head, and uh, while he while he joes, and um, ain't you ain't got no permission to kill him. Mm -mm. Just you know, wake him up. No cops. <laughs> no, co <laughs> no cops. Oh, that sounds like Merle Baggard. Bag him. Does. No it cops. Is time. San Quentin. Uh, so yeah, do you, put the bag over my head. Yeah, he specifically wants a man. Hold it as he struggles to breathe. He'll joe and then pass out. Usually wakes up within five to ten minutes, and then ready for round number two. Right. And you just heard from uh, Lady and the Gramp. Okay. So learn. Yeah. I'm going to start with you. Mm -hmm. You have to endorse one of these freaks. Well, Riz, it's going to be Lady and the Gramp for me this week. This oh, guy yeah. is okay. freaky. I don't like it. I'm yucking his yum. <laughs> I don't like it. What is the, like, what sets that guy it's, apart uh, from, I, like, somebody, like, I'm voting for Merle Baggard? I don't know. It's just very... Uh, it's freaky to me. This is an older man who wants a younger woman, has very specific details to her. I don't like it. Uh, so you think freaky. an old man looking for a young girl. Not a, I, want to say, I don't want to say young girl. because that Young woman. A young woman. A younger woman. Yeah. Trumps a guy who wants another man to come over his house. Yeah. Put a bag over his head. Uh-huh. While he struggles to breathe, Joe's passes out, and then we'll do it again. Yes. To me... This grandpa is freaky grandpa, and I don't uh, I don't like the incestuous vibes. Okay, and I, I understand that part. Thank the you. incestuous vibes are very strange. They're very strange. Rafe. Uh, Merle Baggard. Uh, the incestuous thing is so commonplace now. It's just not freaky enough anymore, dude. That's that's page one Pornhub. Everybody's banging step people. Everyone's banging family members. My bro, everything is uh, my. <laughs> Stepbrother blackmailed me. My, it's all weird. It's so not weird anymore. It's so commonplace. Page one, if it's on page one, Pornhub, it can't be freaking the weird. <laughs> yeah, but Merle Baggard over. Merle Baggard's like, you're getting 12, 13 pages deep before you get to that. Merle Baggard over Forrest Jump? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Forrest Jump, it's cute. Yeah, he asked for a hairy bear. He just jumped in. He's this looking is, for a gangbang. Yeah, this is just he's looking for a gangbang. He's, he's looking for a gangbang. Gang he's looking for a gangbang. This is a feat. <laughs> yeah, he just wants to get the crap beat out of him and uh, feel like he's part. Part it's of it's all club. about just belonging. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, honestly, I kind of get that one. It's community one on one. That guy's just looking for his tribe. I get it, but I think Merle Baggard is looking for. I mean, you're flirting with death. Yeah, oh, yeah. And That's a stranger, pretty freaky. And a stranger controlling that death. You're flirting with death, yeah. And you, Because both sides of that's freaky to me. Because someone has to be like, you're right. I'll choke you. I'll put a bag over your head and risk prison. 
<laughs> yeah. Because he just says in the ad, I do not give you permission to kill me. <laughs> yeah, risking probably a life term. Can't kill me because I didn't give you permission. There's also a lot of like weird, freaky. It's freaky on both counts. Yeah, you're risking a lengthy jail sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going Merle Baggard. Okay. Moon? I, too, am going Merle Baggard. Uh, number one is looking for a gangbang. Uh, number three is looking for, uh, you know, a, a younger gal who knows what his real intentions are, other than he's an older fellow that yeah. wants a younger gal. That's how the world works a lot of times, yeah, unfortunately. Like he might be hiding behind the grandpa thing. Just He's just an old guy that wants to bang a young mm. girl. Yeah, he's looking for some sort of fetish maybe that you have or something yeah. to, to so he can... Right. So that can be the bait so he can yeah. reel you in. Sad, nasty, inappropriate, whatever it is, right, well, Merle Baggard is the freak. It's Forrest Jump. It's Merle Baggard. It's Lady and the Gramp. It's up to you guys. Vote via Twitter at R-I-Z-Z Show. We'll keep the voting uh, up all night, and then we'll get in tomorrow morning. We'll shut her down and see who is moving on to the freak of the year playoffs. And if you missed learn reading any one of the ads, go back to the podcast and listen up. Hey, today, by the way, it's not only Thursday, but today is National Cereal Day. Hence the grape nuts. Moons the grape nuts. I reminded everybody that it was National uh, National Cereal Day before the show. Moon was like, oh, I got our grape nuts. <laughs> well, listen, I have the grape nuts here, but I'm not going to eat dry grape nuts. I want them soggy and wet cardboard and sloppy like a, like a Biscoff cookie that fell in the milk and sat at the bottom for 15 minutes. All right, if you have one like, one uh, cereal to eat. Nuts, dude. Sloppy nuts. One us. cereal to eat for the rest of your life, what is it? Is it grape nuts? Ugh. <laughs> oh, Not you. One cereal. I really <laughs> only have three contenders here. Um, if he says no. grape nuts, I'm putting him in Freak of the Week. He's not changing <laughs> my vote. Oh, man, maybe. It's, it's a, it's a two-horse race between Honey Nut Cheerios and grape nuts. You know what? I'm going grape nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grape nuts. Grape nuts. Grape nuts, okay. Mm -hmm. Lucky Charms. Lucky all Charms. The way. Ooh, good one. Or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's a toss up. Mm -hmm. It's not a toss up for me. It is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, for me, it's Frosted Flakes. Nice. What do you mean? What's that face? That's... I understand. You know what? Out of all of the cereal mascots, Tony the Tiger is the sexiest, so I understand. Hmm. Not only do they have a great mascot, but it's also like you can put bananas in it. See, and that's, strawberries in it. That's, that's, the, some, two that's can the beauty of this. Nose will tickle your beer. Sometimes <laughs> they do the Lucky Charms Frosted Flakes, like the limited. Dude, that is the best. It is the best. I'll be honest with you. I don't need marshmallows in my cereal. I do. For me, it's the utility. If I'm down to one cereal uh, uh, for the rest of my life and only that, chances are I'm going to need all the bang for the buck that I can get. And this is like... Pure, you know, grain, carbs, in energy. I can put, I can put it in yogurt. Do the parfait thing if that's what you want. You can put blueberries on this, strawberries, bananas. You can do anything. Grape nuts for life. Yeah, yeah, but no you do thanks. that with regular like cornflakes too. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do with it literally sure any like cereal. Corn. You can put, yeah, you can <laughs> just put bananas and stuff anytime you want, man. Oh, not with but anything. Nobody puts bananas in in uh, Lucky Charms. Yeah, Reese's peanut butter puffs. Those are great on their own. You don't put bananas in there. That's my point, though. I don't want to pick a cereal that I have to add stuff to to make it good. Yeah, but you don't Praise. have to. But that's what you want if you're only going to one. Because otherwise, if you got one, now you only get Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs every single day. No way. Peanut like Butter, wanna... Captain Crunch, honorable mm. mention. I don't know. If I want to mm. put, like, strawberries in my Frosted Flakes, I can do that, too. Sure. Blueberries, great. Yeah, this is the way I get max utility out of one item. Old school pops, pretty oh. good. Okay, so I got two lists here. List number one is what cereal sells the most boxes. So, like, what is the most... Popular cereal as far as sales go? Cheerios. Gotta be. And the second list I have is what is the most popular cereal as far as not sales, but like we love. Show me Cheerios on that number one for the most. Okay, sales. let's do who sells Got who it. sells the most. Okay. It's either Cheerios or Rice Krispies. So who sells the most cereal? I say Cheerios. 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 We talking company like General Mills, or are we talking? We like talking the like specific brand, specific Make and model, specific one. And this this number is, is from uh, two thousand uh, twenty two. All time? No, this is just for one year. Okay, that changes my opinion. Um, and the list doesn't really ch it doesn't really change year to year because it's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Cheerios probably. Cheerios is number one. Yeah. Cheerios, 
sells 139.1 million boxes. Baby's keeping it in business. Yep. Exactly That's exactly right. what I was thinking. Okay, what do you think number two is? This is cereal sold let's in think a year. Of, uh, let's think of, I mean, the only reason I say Rice Krispies is because it's used in so many things, sure. right? It's kind of like panko. Like you can Rice Krispies yeah. did not make the top ten. Oh, oh right. okay. Well, Honey Nut Cheerios, number two. Honey Nut Cheerios is number three. Hmm. <sighs> Honey Nut Cheerios, 129.3 million. It's also hmm? children. Frosted so, Flakes is on there. Frosted Flakes is number two. Yeah. Yeah. Frosted Flakes, 132.3 million boxes sold. These are all basic bitch cereals. Yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> and I did go there. I'm sorry, Riz. <laughs> You're a basic bitch. I do like some Raisin Bran. Uh, uh, Raisin Bran, no, did not make the top ten. Apple Jacks. Did not make the top Apple ten. Apple Jacks. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Do they still sell those? That's number oh, yeah. five. Cinnamon, Cinnamon Toast, Toast Crunch. There, dude. 105.2 million boxes sold. That's number five. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, number six, yes. 91.7 million boxes sold. Do, do Fruity Pebbles missing number sell? four. Fruity Pebbles, number 10. If Raisin Bran is in this, I'm going to Raisin Bran did not make the top 10. Out. We haven't said any chocolate ones. Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs, no. Lucky Captain Crunch. Charms? Captain Crunch, no. Captain Crunch, peanut Lucky butter Charms, crunch. number seven. Wow. Count Chocula. No. No way. Well, Wheaties. Think of the 80s ones. No, good good call, though. Wheaties. I'm not sure. I'm You're missing. I'm here. <sighs> Yeah, the, the last three, so four, eight, nine are pretty basic bitch cereals. Honey Bunches of Oats. That's number four. Grandparents keeping that in business. Whoa. Honey Bunches of Oats, number four, 111.3 million boxes sold. Honey Bunches of Oats is not terrible. It's not, but it's fine. you Never should treat that. yourself when you're doing cereal. <laughs> I don't it's know fine. why you want to try and be healthy some right the then. Some of the special K stuff with like almonds and honey is, it's fine. It's good like, hey, we're going on a hike today. Let's have a bowl of that for breakfast so we're... Not necessarily oats. happy or satisfied, but it gives us some energy. To this provide. cereal is on the top ten. Oh yes, yeah, number four. What about Kellogg's? Just the flakes, no frost. No. Mm. Like corn flakes. Yeah, corn flakes. Yeah, have you ever had? I thought that'd oats? be number one no. all the time, just because it's been around so long. Right. You said this, this is an old prison cereal. Maybe I should go. Uh, for you would love is, this. It's cereal. not bad. <laughs> you would. It's a little sweet. <laughs> it's all sweet. You know, I don't like it's, sweet. It's yeah. Nice. What about like honeycomb? Nope. I feel like that has hung around forever. Is that the one with sugar daddy? And sugar bear. Sugar smacks. Eight and nine, you're missing. I'm on the smacks. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, number bear. nine, you'll never Sugar guess. Bear. It's life. Life? You know what? We buy that from time to time. Life? I actually like this cereal. Kicks. No. Nope. Oh, checks. Pops. Nope. Number eight. Oh, man. Pops. No, 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 no. no. Uh, are we, dance, are it, we dancing it, around it? It is. Is it unique? Does it have ingredients besides just... Give me a hint. Does it have a mascot? No. Does it have any, is okay. it one ingredient cereal is, or does it have stuff sprinkled in it? It is teetering on an old person cereal, but it's got this one element to kind of make it younger. Kicks? No, we said that. Oh. One element to kind of make it younger. Is make that a marshmallow? Younger. No. It is a frosted. Oh, no. Frosted, frosted sugar smacks? Frosted Freeze? mini wheats. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's some old, that's some, that's way But you see what I'm talking about? Like, it's like. Yeah. Shredded wheat is like an old person right, cereal. Right, I ain't getting anywhere but near like that. But like frosted mini right. wheats. People are eating that because they have to. Because yeah. somebody said, you have to have more fiber in your diet here. Here's At least they're minis. The saddest thing is when it's one big lump. <laughs> That's the shredded wheat. The shredded wheat that's just like a big, it looks like a brick. Yeah, you're supposed to tear it apart or something? You grandpa tear it apart. That's weird. Well, that is a weird cereal. Weird. It's, it's gross. Flashbacks. I've never had that. It's I've like eating hay. <laughs> it is, dude. Yeah. Like it is basically a, a bale of hay. Roasted hay. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You got to get two hooks and like <laughs> throw it up in the bowl. <laughs> but when they get soaked, they're actually really good. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love soaking. Huh. Okay, so, that, so all right, that's, bang. that's most boxes sold. Now, this is, this is a list from 2004 to now. Okay. As far as popular cereals. Mm -hmm. Now, it's based on just opinion. So, what is, give me what the number one cereal is as far as overall people love it. We're taking babies out of the equation. Everybody's involved. Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> Cheerios number two. No, no, I said Honey Nut. Oh, Honey Nut Cheerios. It's probably three. Honey Nut Cheerios did not make the top 30. Lucky Charms, number one. Lucky Charms, number five. Mm. Captain Crunch. Cheerios is number two. Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch, number eight. I'm going to stay I'm gonna stay with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, dude. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, number six. Whoa. Frosted Flakes, That's not number one. Frosted Flakes is number nine. Mm. Raisin Bran? Raisin Bran. Don't disappoint Man, me, America. Dude. Number 28. Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs. Number 13. What's the one with the toucan? 
Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, number seven. Uh, tricks. Tricks, number 11. Damn, nice. Oh, Honey Nut Cheerios tricks. was number 10. Honey Nut Cheerios was 10, by the way. Tricks are for kids. Hmm. Pops. I love Pops. Pops. Uh, corn Pops, number 15. What are the other marshmallow ones? You said Lucky Charms. What, what else is there? There's all the Count Chocula. You're missing number one, three, four. <laughs> Fruity Pebbles. Captain Crunch, Peanut Butter Crunch. Fruity Pebbles. Oh, Reese's Peanut Butter Crunch. Fruity Pebbles did not make this list. Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs is the only sweet cereal that yeah, I can really tell. Yeah, it's good. Right. It's the best of both worlds. It's Cocoa Puffs and, and what did you say? Captain Crunch, Peanut Butter Crunch mixed she, together. She said Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs. But what about Cookie Crisp? No, uh, Cookie Something Crisp like is uh, yeah. number 16. My brother was addicted to those. Me too. All brand is number 17. If you, You'll never get that. Ugh. You said Crispix. That's number 19. Okay. Life? Life did not make the top 30. Now, these are pop this is popularity. I'm excited. The most popular cereal since 2004, according to Google searches. Golden Grams. Love me and Golden Grams. That's poor man cinnamon toast. Golden crunch. Grams didn't. According to Google searches, yeah. you said. Is Grape Nuts on this list? Yes. Is yes. it number one? No. Dang. No. Although this is post, <laughs> post Grape Nut Flakes. Is that different? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want that. Grape Nut Flakes is number 12. How, so how's that? That's not going to be. Grape Nut Boogers. Yeah, it's not going to be cardboardy. Uh, Cocoa Krispies is number 20. Cocoa Krispies. Oreos. Oreo O's. Mm -hmm. Number 22. French Toast Crunch. That's a nice variation. Waffle Crisp. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. They're like little waffles or honey, uh, like maple flavored. Whoa. Crave cereal. Oh, my God. The Number crave. 24. What is They're that? little pockets, in it, and whenever you crunch into them, they got a little chocolate in the middle. Yeah. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Those I are haven't super had, Do they even make those oh, anymore? Crave oh, yes. with a K? Crave with a K. Oh, yeah. Kellogg's Crave. Just chocolate, chocolate, yum, yum, it says. They good. They good. I could just eat a whole box of cereal in a day. Me too. Wait, what is this? Like oh, it's one is sitting. Me too. So it's chocolate. You know, yeah. It's a. It's I'll be a honest, pizza I ate bowl. it out of a big bowl. It's a pizza Crave bowl looking thing. As an adult, chocolate. I don't. I get like the mixing bowl. Yeah. I don't get like the cereal bowls. When I go hard on cereal, I just get a big old plastic, like popcorn something you bowl. could put. Yeah, popcorn. You bowl. You know where you learn that is? Don't tell mom the babysitter is dead. That's whenever she pours. You may be right. The whole box into a thing and puts like four spoons out and goes. Breakfast is served. You may be right. That's where we learned that. And I love it. Honey O's. I don't know what that is. Honey O's. That sounds like a cheap ass. It's honey. That's not, yeah. <laughs> so I came in a bag, dude, at Aldi. Oh, you can't get Honey Nut <clears throat> Cheerios? Here's some Honey, honey O's. Hey, don't sleep on those bag cereals that are off brand. Some of those are Post really good. Post Honey O's. I don't, I don't know if I remember these. Maybe was the one that was like a honey. pun on hating your wife? Kaboom? Because that's number 26. Kaboom no, cereal. there was one that was like. God, what was it? What is this? Some weird looking clown cereal, vitamin cereal nope. killer clown on it. Poor kid cereal. You don't get <laughs> you don't get a cartoon mascot. It's a really creepy old dude in a crown. Kaboom uh, is from the sixties. Wow, you're from the sixties, aren't you? Apple Jacks is number twenty seven. I like Apple Jacks. Uh, Cocoa Pebbles number twenty nine. Count Chocula number thirty. Nice. Apple Jacks is the uh, frog, right? Nope. Sugar That's, smash, no, bro. Honeycomb. What's honeycomb? Honeycomb's just that little thing that looks like a dust bunny that looks like a, it'd probably be like a tender lover and maybe go down on you. But. <laughs> <laughs> honeycomb, honeycomb, me one, honeycomb. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that yeah, guy, yeah. you know? Honeycomb was number one. I guy was made of. He just looked like Number a, 18. Honey Smacks was number 14. <laughs> Wait, say again. So the frog was the what? Honey Smacks. Honey Smacks. There's and, Honey Smacks, and then there's Sugar Smacks. And Sugar and that's Bear. The bear. That's the bear that seems like he's on heroin. Yeah, he's like <laughs> Mitch Hedberg coming like, out with hey, a deep you like, hey. Hey. Well, you like cereal, boys and girls? <laughs> yeah, What's look at this. this guy? This box has a lot of yellow. You're eating that much sugar, and you're still that far down. You you are you have a heroin problem. Yeah. Sugar Smacks. Okay, that's the frog. That frog. All right, number that one. That frog is way. hip, dude. You see this hat? It's, it's sideways. Yeah, dude. The number one Golden cereal. Golden Crisp, but that's popular. the one with the bear. Yeah. Tell us. Is Rice Krispies. Oh. Which nobody said. Rice Krispies yeah. number one. That's because everybody's making one. Rice Krispie treats. But this it wasn't even a top seller. I said it in the last seller. category. It wasn't a top seller, but since 04, it's been the most popular. It's been the most Google searched. Yeah, it's been the most Google searched. That's probably because uh, they're trying to figure out how to make Rice Krispie treats. Yep. Chex. Yep. Chex is number three. That's got to be for Chex Mix. Dude, Chex I love Chex. 
They have all the different <laughs> flavors, like chocolate and cinnamon and all Nobody that. Nobody said Special K. Uh, <laughs> bless, bless you. you. Thank you. Ketamine? Not that, no. Nobody, special K Your mom, four. your divorced mom has eaten Special K for all three meals, mm. dude. That's the only Some people buying Special K is the new variations on it is good. Like the almond honey crisp or the cranberry. They got to have something in it, though. Like straight Special K. With the berries? With the dehydrated berries? Shut up. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Oh, what, you want a little uh, golden crisp? I want a little bit of there sugar bear. I'm in paradise with some super golden crisp cereal. The honey sweet part of this complete breakfast. Well, whose voice is that? Oh, he nodded off, though. You got hungry, friends. Sugar beer. This table's taken. Now we're turning the tables on you. Dude, he is so cool. That bear reminds me of Kevin Spacey. Will Sugar Bear lose his super golden crisp? A creepster? Not creepy Kevin Spacey, but like Kevin Spacey when he's on Quaaludes. That's what? what that bear reminds me of. <laughs> Quaaluded Kevin Spacey. Yep. Yo, who, who was that? That that voice was totally familiar. Yeah, it sounds like a Bing Crosby. Kind of like cool Rat Pack. Oh, Gary yeah, you're right. Matthews. Gary Matthews, or Jerry Matthews, G-E-R-R-Y. Uh, Bing Crosby. An emulation of a Bing Crosby. Yeah, right. Persona. Didn't it sound like a cool, like I'm Bing Crosby. I'm like cool, casual. An easygoing uh, character who yeah. crooned <laughs> his serial's praises to the tune of Joshua fit the bat- uh, fought the battle of Jericho. Ah. Uh-huh. All right, well, there you go. Happy uh, National Serial Day, everybody. Wow. Special K Red Berries is so good. Give it another try, says Stacy. All right, Stacy, I'll do it. If you're going to do it, today's the day. I'll do it. All right, it's 7.50. It's the Riz Show. Presented with the Fast Lane. we got crap on celebrities after the break. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now <laughs> at www.raceway. Why are you whispering? Dot com. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Delays increasing 270 eastbound between 44 and Manchester. Average speed 25 miles an hour. There's also a left lane blocked. Due to a crash, 55 northbound at Butler Hill Road. Your point forecast, scattered rain, possible high of 59. Right now it's 46 at the point studio. Have you ever uh, passed a time during your normal commute trying to figure out what the vanity plate in front of you is supposed to represent? I love that game. I love that game, too. I love that game. Yeah, because deep down you're trying to figure out, is it something dirty that slipped past yeah. the, uh, the yeah. approvers? Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a new poll. Uh, uh, there's a new poll out on uh, vanity license plates, and almost twenty thousand Americans weighed in. Uh, people were first asked if they ever had a personalized plate. Uh, I know Rafe Rafe twenty three has. I did too. Amen. That's did a you, Southern Illinois thing. Did you? I did. My dad did it for me because I loved punk music when I was in high school, and my dad thought he was super cool. By wait, day. was it P N K G R L? No, no, no. It was P N K O U T one. Punk out it, one. But it looks like pink out. And so people would say rock out with your pink out, which was a sexual joke that my <laughs> yeah. friends used to say to me. But it was supposed to be punk out one. <laughs> and I yeah. had it until I was like your 25. Your dad did it for yeah, you? Yeah, he did. Yeah, my mom did mine. Yeah, actually, if I would see PNK on a license plate, I would think pink. Yeah, it made sense. Uh, 14% of people say they're sporting a, sporting a vanity plate. I mean, another, t- another 12% say they've, they've had one in the past. 26% of people haven't, but would consider them. And 32% of people haven't and are not interested whatsoever. Mm. I, think I don't know what I would, mine would be. I, You know what? I'm going to turn 40 next year. I think I'm going to get a, a new plate, a vanity plate for my no 40th. No way. Yeah, I think I'm going to become a new era of myself and get a vanity plate. But I don't want people to know it's, I wouldn't get like, learn 69. Like I wouldn't do learn anything like 69. that. Learn 69. I don't think that would pass, actually. <laughs> you don't think? I don't think so. People no. were born in 69 and have that. What would you get? I don't know. What yeah, but you get? know, they're like the state has to approve all of them. So yeah. if you if your plate said learn 69, I don't think that would get through. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, it, that's an instruction manual. <laughs> I don't think the state's going to sponsor That's a good point. That's hey. a good point. <laughs> learn 69. Hey, learn 69. <laughs> yeah. Nice little PSA. What would yours be? I don't know. I'd probably be like, I don't know. I don't have any creativity right now. Please tweet what I should do. I feel like it. it should be N R 
NRB. Nervous. NRB. Nervous. NRVS. Super nervous. S P R N R V S. Super just nervous. Just, just a number. <laughs> nervous one. Nervous one. N R V S. Guys, I'm not as nervous. That's a great plate. I have been. Nervous one? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great vanity plate. N R V S one. That's great. Nobody take that. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> and it's gone. Damn. That's what your plate would read. So Mike says NRB lover. <laughs> NRB dash LVR. NRB <laughs> LVR. That's great. Oh, man. That's, that's so good. good. Okay, so you're a nervous one. That's your vanity plate. Okay. What would Moons be? Grape nuts. Just uh, no. G-R-P-N-U-T-Z. G-R-P-N-U-T-Z. <laughs> nah, S-H-K-A. B-R-A. I couldn't live in Missouri because uh, we only get six. S-H-K-A? B-R-A. Shaka, brah. Oh, God. Shaka, brah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pit maneuvering you as soon as I see you. G-N-G. Good luck catching me, brah. G-N-G, B-N-G. We can bang. do apostrophes, can't we, in Missouri? I think we can. You can, can you, have an apostrophe. A, as, a, as a digit? As a I know digit, yeah. We only get six. Right. You can use it as a digit. Some states get seven. Those lucky, Those silly lucky bastards. Lucky guys, yeah. Hmm. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Well, that, I guess uh, one, Illinois two, seven, because I, yeah, I had seven. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so if it's grape nuts, it's seven. G-R-P-N-U-T-Z. <laughs> or you can just be grape nut. G-R-P-N-U-T. <laughs> How many do you get? You don't need a U, six. just N-T-Z. Only next. six. Yeah. So G-R-P-N-T-Z. If people are, oh, people are grape loving nuts. energy up. That'd be cool. I eat grape nuts like four times a year. <laughs> I love them, but I <laughs> Oh, yeah, you'd be energy up. N yeah, energy R -G U -P. N -R -G -U -P. That's That's cool. a great one. Yeah, it is. Don't 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 touch that one, please. So, learn is nervous one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rafe is just exploder, says Nick. Just X. <laughs> no, no, not even an X. Just exploder. <laughs> S-P-L-O. That is a good one. Good. D-R. P-R-K-S-T-K. Exploder. DLR, TAB, tell me all about it. Yes. Uh, Mike says, uh, my uncle has a, a personalized plate of our last name, which is Swallow. Oh, God. Spelled S-W-A-L-O-W. -W. When he went to get it renewed a couple years ago, the DMV rejected it because it was explicit. <laughs> yeah, they've gotten stricter over the years. Anybody got ass man? Is that out there? I'm sure. I don't think that would even fly. Like, you can't have ass man on your... Not anymore. It's I know taken. the RFT every year, like, posts, like, publishes the list of rejected... Yeah, I love that. ...rejected plates. And I think they recently did it, maybe a couple weeks ago. They did. What would my... So, okay, so Rafe's will ear be? Well, you already have Rafe 23, so... Yeah. <laughs> Just bring it back. Bring, bring it Rafe back. 23 back. It's not as embarrassing when it's not on a $150 Datsun hatchback. <laughs> what would mine be? Uh, Angry. <laughs> Angry yeah. one. Yeller. Oh. No, yours would be this one. -E -L -L yours would be this one that was R rejected in 2022. H eight P E P L. Hate people. Oh, yeah. Hate people. <laughs> <laughs> Look well, at they rejected that? This is what it looks like. Yeah, rejected. Number H -A -P -E -P -L. one. H eight P E P L. I hate <laughs> people. Hate people. S H N L S S. Shinless? Shinless one. <laughs> 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 yes, dude. dude. E F F O F F F off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe sucks. sucks. <laughs> no, you can't. Are you dumb? Oh, that's a good one. Are you dumb? But <clears throat> why is that rejected? I don't know. Maybe I'd be. Somebody does have a plate that says like Riz one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a Greek fire one. Like there's uh, somebody. Mr. Fart. Mr. Fart. His one was rejected. Killers. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about it. What would I consider getting a, a vanity plate? I don't know. I, I bet you I'd be in the 26% of have not had a vanity plate, but would consider it. It's fun. Dude, you could get A R B T R for Arbiter. Arbiter? Yeah. Mm hmm. Arbiter one, <clears throat> yells with a Z. Oh, yells with a Z. Y -E -L -L -Z. That's pretty good. Yells with a yeah, that's good. 
How much is it? Somebody said it costs between 50 and 100 bucks. Like, do you have to pay per year? Probably. To renew it. Rave 23, did you have to pay per year or is it a one-time fee? I don't even know how to do it. My mom did it as a special surprise for my... Whatever it was, it cost one-third of the price of my vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Which is all the contextual clues you need to know you don't need a vanity plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. So, uh, preserving my virginity, I think. Rejected plate doobie, D U B E E, or <laughs> yeah. drunk, doobie. which yeah. D R U N K. Boobs would be a great one. Oh, badass. Mm -hmm. Rejected, nice. huh? Axe murderer, A X M R D R. That was rejected. If you were, if you could, like, go the other way and put, like, L V C O P S, like, love cops. Amanda says, <laughs> uh, okay, write this down. Okay. She has a plate in her town. She says she can't believe it got through. The number the number was zero. F K S G V N. Yeah. Nice. See that. That's a good one. Here's yours, Rafe. Although it was rejected. S X Y G P A. Sexy, Sexy Grandpa. Grandpa. Yeah. Dude. So lit. <laughs> There's a good one. S T L wet. That's Jason Momoa's. <laughs> yeah, when Jason Momoa comes to town. <laughs> Clean up on Manchester. All right, today is uh, March the 7th. Back in the day, 127 years ago, 1897. Now, this is why today is National Cereal Day. Dr. John Kellogg served the world's first cornflakes to his patients at a mental hospital in Battle Creek, Michigan. There's a movie about that starring Matthew Broderick, I believe. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. No. <laughs> the Wolf of Wall Street. Glory? No, no, no. Somebody look that up. Okay. Music Man? No. I think it's with Nancy Broderick. It's about... About cereal? It's about Dr. Kellogg. The Road, the road to, well. to Wellville. Yes. Is it... Uh, Anthony Hopkins, Matthew, Bro Matthew Broderick, Bridget Fonda, John Cusack, Dana yeah. Carvey. Wow. Oh, the list goes on? Dude, it's a great... Yeah, it's a good movie. Came out in 94. This yeah. goes on and on. 39% um, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, well, it they says, don't know This anything. is not a great movie. Okay, well... Hell of a cast. 91 years ago, 1933, the board game Monopoly was created and trademarked by Charles Darrow in Atlantic City. Uh, 49 years ago, 1975, David Bowie puts out his ninth record, Young Americans, featuring the smash hit fame. 44 years ago, 1980, the movie Coal Miner's Daughter was released. Oh, yes. Sissy Spacek Lynn. and Loretta Lynn. All right, 41 years ago, 1983, TNN, the national network, went on the air. Okay, remember TNN? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then it became what? An 03. No. Oh. Is it TNN. TN it's not CBS. Uh, TNN. TNN became FX. L3 Spike. Spike. That's what it was. Spike TV, and then it was changed to the Paramount Network in 2018. Oh. Didn't know that. Uh, 39 years ago today, 1985, Where the World was released. If you haven't seen the documentary on that, pretty damn good. Mm hmm. Uh, 37 years ago, 1987. This became the first rap album to top the U.S. chart. It stayed there for seven weeks at number one. What? What year? 1987. The first rap album ever to top Sugar the U.S. Hill chart. Sugar Hill Gang? Nope. Run DMC. Nope. 87? 1987. Blondie? Honest. Nope. The first total rap record. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no. She, <laughs> she, yo, she Blondie made a rap record. Was, uh, Rapture was the first actual, like, hip-hop it's noted as being like the first music video to feature like rapping in quotations. Beastie Boys licensed to ill. That's it. Beastie Boys licensed to ill. The number one album in the country on this day, 1987, stayed there for seven weeks. 35 years ago, 1989, Millie Vanilli's debut record, Girl, You Know It's True, was released. 27 years ago, 1997, Howard Stern's Private Parts came out. Love that movie. 25 years ago, 1999, Stanley Kubrick dies of natural causes at the age of 70. 13 years ago in 2011, Charlie Sheen fired from Two and a Half Men. Wow, winning. And eight <laughs> years ago in 2016, Peyton Manning announces his retirement from the Denver Broncos. Winner.com. Oh, that's on his, that, yeah, that's his website. Winner.com. And that's what happened back in the <laughs> day. I don't remember how they... Um, <clears throat> sorry, Rafe. That's okay. Do you remember how they killed him off in the show? Did he get hit by a train? Elevator shaft? 
either a piano fell on him or <laughs> something crazy. I think Hit by a Train might be. I remember them discussing like, how they were going to kill Charlie Sheen's character off. And one was like a piano falling from like a building onto him. Yeah, they wanted to do it where they, make, where they made sure he could never come back. Yeah. I think he was hit by a train. I think you're right. Anyway. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. Wow, winning. Wow. Uh, it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best. Flush the rest. Brighthouseco.com. 636-600-0188. Uh, prosecutors have dropped their lawsuit against three men who are being charged with allegedly possessing stolen handwritten notes and lyrics by Don Henley. The three men are accused of trying to sell around 100 pages of documents belonging to Henley, including the lyrics to Hotel California and Life in the Fast Lane, all worth around $1 million each. And Henley reportedly waived his attorney-client privilege, failing to disclose around 6,000 pages of evidence in time. And so a DA shared that the defense should have time to go through the material saying, quote, it is now clear that both witnesses and their lawyers, two of which also shielded themselves from thorough and complete cross-examination. So by... was Don Henley's fault? Uh, yeah, he's withholding evidence that the defense's attorneys couldn't get through. And so they dropped this case because uh. they're like, there's just no time to actually do this. Do this. You know, they can't even. <laughs> they're, they're essentially saying that Don Henley's trying to conceal evidence. What is he trying to conceal? Uh, I don't know. I, to be honest with you, evidence, evidence. Yeah, dude. Let me read that. Let me read this. It is now clear that both witnesses and their lawyers, two of which also shielded themselves from thorough and complete cross examination by relying on Mr. Henley's invocation, used the privilege to conceal and hide information that they believed would be damaging to their position that the lyric sheets were stolen. What are you hiding, Henley? What are you hiding, Henley? What are you hiding, Henley? Let us know. His legal team says they will pursue further action in a civil court. Mm. Um, I have some audio for this. A month after David Lee Roth took some shots at Wolfgang Van Halen. I'll tell you all about it. Over his bandmate in the last incarnation of Van Halen, Wolfie has now responded. Here's a little uh, clip of his interview talking about, you know, what he has to say essentially to David Lee Roth. All right, Wolfgang Van Halen. I guess I'm honored he even thinks about me as much as he seems to. And I guess you have to take what he says with a grain of salt, considering he also said that he wrote Eruption and came up with the, the Frankenstein story. What? He said he wrote all the films. I guess that's all I can say. You know, I, I seem to have been born into this Van Halen drama that has come way before me. And I guess now that my dad isn't here to be a target, I guess he went to the next best thing. I think that's the best thing he can say, and I think yeah, he handled it really well. When asked about playing with the surviving members of Van Halen in a tribute to his dad, Wolfie said, I don't want to play that music without my dad here. I really feel like if I meet Wolfgang Van Halen, we could be friends. I agree. He's a level-headed guy, and he also has a hot temper. As am I. And I think that you guys would be best. I him. feel like we could hang. You should have went feel... to the show at the Red Flag a couple weeks ago. It was during the week. So? New friend. New friend alert. <laughs> Hot new couple alert. <laughs> By this time next year, me and Wolfie will be palling around. Yeah, yeah. But you just, you just got to leave your house. There you yeah. Go. Uh, oh, never mind. Can he come to my place? Are they playing the factory anytime soon? No, but they did last, before Red Flag, they were here at the factory. Well, before the Dome. Yeah. Well, they were, remember they were supposed to play Point Fest. Oh, yes. And it got And canceled. then it got rained out. And then I thought I had like flowers and everything. And I thought. You didn't get to meet them that day? No, he, they never showed. The Sad. show got canceled. So sorry. Uh, Judas Priest. We're going to play video games. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> Judas Priest is releasing Invincible Shield this week, and there's 30 metal bars around the world that are going to have a listening party, and one is happening here in St. Louis. The Pizza Metal Bar, The Headless Bat, they're doing the listening party for this new Judas The Headless Bat, nice. Where is that at? That's got to um, be in the Grove. Where it's off of, um, oh God, what is this? Street? That sounds like a place that's in the Grove. The Headless Bat. It's a really cool spot. If you don't have follow you been? Them, I have not been, but I've looked on their socials and, and I want to go. Cool. It just looks cool. They got like great art and like they play metal all the time and the pizza looks good. They sell out. Um, let's see. They are located. Apologies the for bat. not having this all ready to go. The oh, location. It's a pinball place. It is Morgan Ford. Tower Grove go. South. Tower Grove. That's right by Nailed your it. pad. Yeah, have you been Life. yet? The headless bat. Mm -mm. I love there. pinball. Love it.
Do you like pizza? I love pizza and pinball. You like heavy metal? Love heavy metal. Go to the Headless Bat. When Wolfgang Van Halen comes to town, that's where I'm going to take him on a date. Right on. <laughs> Hannah Gutierrez Reed is the armorer of the Western film Rust, and she was convicted on Wednesday of involuntary manslaughter in the death of the film's cinematographer. This is the same, it's under the umbrella of this Alec Baldwin case that's been ongoing. Uh, the verdict was reached after less than three hours of deliberations, according to Ooh. Variety. So this, yeah. uh, this woman had the job. She loaded the live bullet into Alec Baldwin's pistol, which should have contained only dummy rounds. The gun fired, hilling uh, Helena Hutchins, and seriously wounded wounding the director, Joel Souza. And so what's interesting about this young lady who just got sentenced, her she got the job because her father... It's like a famous one. ...is a famous film armorer. He did Tombstone and 310 to Yuma, L.A. Confidential. Yeah. And so kind of, you know, she followed her dad's footsteps. It was footsteps. like the family business. Right. Uh, Except yeah. for he didn't train her, apparently. Apparently not. What well, the hell? they said she was very cavalier with the weapons. It's your job it's to make sure no one gets shot with a bullet from the gun you hand someone. Yeah. That's it. That's all you gotta do. They took her right to jail. Yeah. She's going to serve um, 18 months in prison. Like they, they didn't even, like, the, the her lawyer was like, you know, hey, bond until sentencing. And they go, nope, right to jail. Yeah. Literally took it from the courtroom That's to right. jail. Yeah. Her parents devastated, obviously. I mean, you know, it's terrible. Just the whole thing is terrible. Alec Baldwin is set to stand trial for manslaughter in July. So we'll see what's going to happen there. This may not bode well for him because no. she got convicted so quickly, but... I don't know. I think it's a different story. I think it's very she different. She is the armor. Right. That was her job to yeah. know yeah. what she was you, doing. You literally, I mean, I'm sure on your contract in some way, it says, like, this is the, this is the one thing that cannot happen. Mm -hmm. This is your responsibility. Yeah. Right. Please make sure this one but thing does also, not happen. There's also, there's a, I think he wears two hats because I think the chain of custody. Producer style. Is producer and actor mm -hmm. are also supposed to check and he's both. Yeah. It's hey. Uh, he sold his house in the Hamptons or it's for sale. Yeah. Did you see the that. Did you see the video that he was selling? Yeah, like he's he takes on a video. tour. Yeah, he's he's trying to move it. Hey, uh, about the headless bat, uh, our buddy, professional goalie Mike McKenna says uh, headless bat effing rules. Just South Tower Grove, pizza's awesome. Rick's the owner. He's in a band called the Lion's Daughter. Yeah, they oh, show, I know Rick. They show horror flicks and play metal all night. It's cool. Oh, that's sweet. I didn't know that was Rick's place. Rick's Rick's good dude. Shout out to the headless bat. Yeah, let's Thanks, all Mike. go. Timothy hey, Chalamet says he wants Austin Butler's Elvis to appear in the upcoming Bob Dylan biopic that he's starring in called A Complete Unknown. He says there's an Elvis character in the Johnny Cash uh, Walk the Line movie. It's really brief. It's very brief, but it was kind of, you know, he wants to recreate that kind of cameo with Austin Butler playing Elvis, which I think would be pretty cool. Okay, so like Timothy Chalamet is playing Dylan? Bob Dylan, yeah. Remember they did, didn't they do a Dylan movie where there was like four or five different versions yeah, of Kate Bob Dylan? Yeah, Kate Blanchett, right? She played Bob Dylan. Yeah, she was one of version them. of him. I didn't see that. It's called, like, I'm Not There. Uh, Austin Butler's not so bad. I didn't see that Elvis thing because I don't care. But uh, I've seen, seen him in this uh, Masters of the Air. He's all right. He's got a he's got a unique look. It's cool. It's kind of cool having that sort of look out in Hollywood yeah. right now. I like him. I like Dirty Austin Butler with the upcoming biker film that he's going to be in. Yeah, it's all this like weird classic stuff. Although that, remember, we were looking at that. That looked like a guy cosplaying that was motorcycle. Cosplay biker Austin Butler's for me. <laughs> Um, speaking of Timothy Chalamet, by now you've maybe seen Dune 2, and maybe you even got the pornographic popcorn bucket when you went uh, to go see like, it. Oh, it looked like, uh, Say what? Flashlight. Yes. Oh, because um, the Shai Halu just got the worm or something? Yeah, yeah, it's the top of the popcorn bucket. It looks like a, oh. like a... Flashlight top. You nasty thinking people. Just I get, know. The, get out of the gutter. That's what it looks just, like. Can't you just enjoy things? Well, people Plus, are enjoying it. you can just it, bang man. a regular popcorn bucket. Everybody knows <laughs> that. That's right, Rafe. You don't need a special bucket. Listen, the Dune 2 Sandworm <laughs> Popcorn Pornographic Bucket is um, is being sold out everywhere. It's gone so viral that some people are actually trying to sell their used buckets for $800 on eBay. <laughs> SNL did a whole sketch what? on it. <laughs> they seem to be going for $100 or less, though, so um, you can still get it pretty reasonably priced, but some people are... Pay, you know, paying top dollar. So they're not selling them in, in theaters anymore? They were originally sold for $25, and maybe you can find them, but I guess they're selling out everywhere. It's got to be deliberate, right? I would think so. That it looks like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, not deliberately to made, to, to be made sexual, but but somebody that sees it in the production, in the in the, in the the workups of it, goes, mm, you know what, somebody's going to mistake this for this, and mm -hmm. it might, yeah, catch, we'll some, some press. might catch some news. Yeah.
They did a good thing. Lionsgate is taking two of their biggest movie franchises, John Wick and Twilight. They're turning them into two different TV series. Why? Uh, not too much is known about either, but the Twilight series is going to be animated, which excites me. Because <laughs> I'm one of these people, anytime Twilight is on, it's terrible, but I have to watch it. You know, if right, like TNT. sparkling vampires. I love the sparkling vampire skin and the drama. It's the... Uh... We talked about this, but that's like Twilight and Harry Potter are the comedian. Ho oh, it's on in the hotel. It's always on yeah. like some cable channel on the weekend is showing the Twilight and I, I've Harry never Potter seen, series. I've never seen any of them. Never seen any of them in full. Take but a I've gander. Seen pieces. I've seen pieces of Jacob. Ah, oh, I know. So gorgeous. Edward. Oh, uh, the yeah. John Team Wick Jacob, Team Edward. I forgot about that. The John Wick franchise has already found its way to TV in the form of a prequel series. Maybe you've heard of it called The Continental. The Continental. Uh, is that supposed to be good? Apparently it's on Peacock. I don't know. I haven't watched it, but I always thought it would be an interesting story. Yeah. About the hotel. Mm. I love John Wick. Yeah, I've never seen John Wick. Is it all um, Keanu Reeves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. it's, just, it's just shooting. Yeah, it's just gore, right? Just, that's not even gore. It's uh, like violence. action. Oh. Young Wick. Martin Scorsese's acclaimed gangster film, The Departed, is getting a 4K uh, and Blu-ray release. Who has a Blu-ray? Does anybody buy Blu-ray anymore? No. Uh -uh, never did. The hell kind of press release is this? Anyway, it's going to happen on April 23rd. And finally, Forbes has released the list of the highest paid actors for last year. Okay? So these are the top 10 Actors that made the most money in the year Not 2023. Richest, just top, earning. Yeah, earnings. I'm sorry. I did miss uh, miss say that earlier. So top earners in 2023. Who do you think is on this list? The Rock. The Rock. Not on the list. Uh, Timothy Chalamet. No. Ryan Gosling. You no. said 2023? 2023. Yeah. Uh, Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, number two, $59 million. <clears throat> she had Barbie money, um, which made over $1 billion at the box office, and she also had a cameo in Asteroid City. Cillian Murphy. No. Think of people with deals. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm sorry. Ryan Gosling was on the list. Matt Damon and Ryan Gosling tied for fourth at $43 million. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, number nine, $38 million. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of top female. Kate Blanchett. No. Man. I'm uh, Scarlett Johansson. No. Scar Joe. I'm trying to think of the big movies from last year. Uh, Emma Stone. No. Chris Pratt. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no. Anyone Any named Chris? No out. Chris's. Tom's. Any Tom's? Any Tom's. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom, 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 Tom Cruise. Cruise. 45 yes, yes. million. Number oh, yeah. Three. That movie came out. Right? The Mission Impossible. Yeah, 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 it was poop. Number was one is poop. really surprising, but once you think about what he's done. He? Okay, it's a he. Sandler. Adam, Sandler. Adam Sandler is number yeah. one. Netflix deal, dude. Yeah, dude. So, Murder Mystery, You Were So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah, Leo, and now Spaceman, which Moon and I watched a couple weeks ago, and it's excellent. Can I last it? weekend? I love it. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good? It is really good. As an arachnophobe. I'm Would fine. I like it? You'll have uh, yeah, moments it's a cute that spider. are difficult, but <laughs> okay, it's, I don't like spiders. It's, it's not meant to be. It's no. meant to play on it the the human you know the the human arachnophobia that we have enough to make it uncomfortable, mm. but but it dances around it to make you okay with it. So He's got Sand a cute little face. Yeah. Sandler, Robbie, uh huh, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Matt Damon, and Ryan Gosling, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt not on the list, but his ex wife is. Angelina Jolie. No, his other ex-wife. Oh, uh, Jennifer yeah. Aniston. Jennifer Aniston is number six at forty-two million made last year. And then there's a tie for number Did seven. She, what movies were? She, I guess. Well, she was a murder mystery too. She was in uh, the morning the show. Morning show. Morning yeah. show. And then she had another show, didn't she? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Good Leonardo for, DiCaprio and DiCaprio. Jason Statham are tied for number Jason seven. Dude, Statham? Jason Statham. Has anybody watched Beekeeper yet? No. 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 Good for him. What do you mean no? I don't like violence. What a stupid movie. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I think about that. Be wary of a man who keeps bees. <laughs> and number buzz, 10 buzz. that you're not going to guess, uh, Denzel Washington made uh, $24 million. Oh, last year. I love Denzel. Hey, yeah. there, is, there is breaking news here uh, in the sports and entertainment world. And this is from uh, ESPN's verified page. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, Mike Tyson will face Jake Paul in a boxing match July 20th. Oh, goodness. Mike Tyson, back in the ring. Jake Paul, 
July 20th, AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Uh, the main event will air on Netflix. Mm. Doesn't that guy's name sound like I've, I know I always say this, Paul? Like in the in the weirdest sense, always sounds like a like a high sticking penalty. Like you know, Paul. Like in field hockey, if you get hit with a stick, you, you pulled that guy. Paul, fifteen yards, Jake Paul, fifteen yards. That's a penalty. But this is the first time. Well, and Jake Paul's been been doing these boxing things, pay per view things. This is his first kind of real old opponent. Is Mike Tyson. He's in his fifties. <sighs> this is a lose lose for Jake Paul. Right? Because if he lo if he loses, he loses. If he wins, he beat up a 50-something. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people oh, I'm watching. derail what we're doing, but a lot of people think that when it's money grab and they sign a contract, like, not to knock him out. A lot of people say that well, that's what a lot of damage would be taken. Yeah. Basically, with Floyd, they're like, you don't have to lose, but don't knock him out. Uh, to who? I'm having a party. Bag. I'm having a party. I'm having a party. This will, be, this will be a boxing party. You're talking about it's a Mayweather? Yeah. What they told Basically, Jake Paul's people. Because he's such a draw. Because, of the, dude, every kid that grew up on YouTube thinks he's, like, the biggest star in the world. This is def I'm interested. And, you know, for people my age, they want to stay love Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. They remember back in the... Uh, dude, Tyson fights were such a thing back in the, in the late 80s and 90s. Yeah. I and mean, it was such an every anytime Mike Tyson fought, it was such an event. Mm -hmm. Cool thing about Mike Tyson in this event is if anyone's gonna sign the NDA saying they'll take a dive and then forget and <laughs> destroy you in the ring because <laughs> yeah. they go see red, it's gonna be Mike Tyson, dude. He's just like, oh, I forgot I signed that. Sorry about that, Jake. <laughs> so, right. Sorry so, I knocked your head off your shoulder, Jake. That, that's, that's, but that's on me. That's my bad. So people my age and our age. You yeah, know, this is generation see, versus generation. want to see Mike Tyson fight and they want to see the, him destroy this kid. Yeah, but that's what. Yeah. True. They want to see, like in Fight Club, when, uh, yeah. when Edward Norton beats up, uh, right. beats up, what's his name? 30 Seconds of Mars guy, Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. I wanted to destroy something beautiful. Yeah, and all the sons that have always wanted to knock out their father. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. They're 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 rooting for Jake Paul. He's fifty seven and he's still a badass. Yeah, that's wi Tyson. that's wild though. That's that's two generations. How old is he? Twenty something. I think Jake. Yeah, Jake Paul's in his twenties. Two generations apart. He's twenty seven. So they're and, forty years apart. And Mike Tyson. Or th thirty years. Thirty apart. years apart. Mike Tyson's fifty seven. Oh, we're well, having a party. I may get a hot dog card again. Wow. The difference between them <laughs> is too old to be in some sports. I'm going to do a hot dog card. It's <laughs> settled. All right, Moon. Celebrities celebrating a birthday today. Brandon T. Jackson. That's Al Pacino in uh, Tropic Thunder. He's also in the Percy Jackson movies. He's 40. Laura Prepon. Uh, is it Prepon? Prepon. Prepon from Orange is the New Black. And that 70s show is 44. Jenna Fisher, St. Louis' own, is 50. Peter Sarsgaard is 53. Rachel Weiss is 54. Wanda Sykes is 60. E.L. James, the Fifty Shades of Grey author, is 61. Taylor Dane, uh, Tell It to My Heart, uh, Love Will Lead You Back, is 62. Brian Cranston is 68. Cranston. Cranston. Uh, <laughs> Lynn Swan is 72. That's the NFL Hall of Famer who won four Super Bowls with the Steelers. Uh, MVP of Super Bowl 10 in 1976. Uh, Lynn is 72, and Peter Wolf, lead singer of Jay Giles' band, uh, biggest hit is? Uh, Angel is a centerfold. That's right. 78 years old. Also a lesser hit, Love Stinks. And oh, your yeah. son, and by the way, your son's birthday today. My freaking son. Doing your boy. 14 years old. I can't believe it. Happy uh, birthday, son. Happy birthday, buddy. Uh, today's Porto birthday, which will be brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet is Michelle Raven. And today's birthday girl has been in 210 fine films, including The Abominable Black Man 4, Ass Clowns 2, Big Bottom Girls 1, Black Zilla vs. Manaconda 2, The Butt Hut, The Four Finger Club 11, Gutter Mouths 19, Hot Bods and Tailpipe 22, Mission to Uranus, White Trash Whore 1, and who can forget a role in 2022's Lights, Camera, Waxin'. Oh. <laughs> 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 that was a musical, I think. Michelle Raven is 54 years old. That's your birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We have some of your emails. 
It is 832. It's the Riz Show presented on the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We got a lane blocked due to a crash 170 southbound at Ledoux Road. There's also a left lane blocked due to a crash 55 northbound at Butler Hill Road. Your point forecast scattered rain is possible high of 59. Right now it's 46 at the point studio. Here, uh, who's in the right? A Jimmy John's employee refuses to accept cash. Hmm. Uh, you are Jimmy John's last week. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. I love. Yeah, I'm not John. a fan of their bread. I know. I think it's just. <laughs> we know. Over, I think it's overhyped. It was damn delicious last okay, Sunday. Okay, so you go to Jimmy John's, you get whatever you're. What do you get? Well, right now I get the veggie because I'm off the bird. Okay, so it's just basically lettuce. Uh, yeah. It's lettuce on bread. I can't it's think of blocked. anything worse than, than a veggie Jimmy John's. You know what? Fine. More for me. I don't want you eating the veggie. My Jimmy wife John's. is obsessed with Jimmy John's. My kids love it. I don't. Tim get loves it. the tuna at Jimmy John's. Tim loves the tuna. Tim <laughs> loves the tuna. Tim loves the tuna. You turned into old Jewish woman. Just All right, so you go. You get your your veggie. You get your, your lettuce and and. Uh, and tomato on and my bread. flotational device bread, yeah, yes, that I will survive mess. on in the <laughs> apocalypse. Okay, yes. you go to pay and you give a card, right? Here's your card. Yeah. yeah you pay with a credit card. Mm -hmm. You don't pay with cash, right? Sometimes. Oh, you do at yeah. Jimmy John's. Well, I guess at this one particular Jimmy John's location, they were not accepting cash that day. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. I would assume if a place doesn't accept cash, are there signs all over the place? I would assume. Like this is a cat or this is a card only establishment. It should be posted. And and that's that's becoming more commonplace, right? Cashless. No, ca cashless. Right. Uh, I believe at Enterprise Center it's cashless. Yeah, but I can I can kind of see those kind of things. Those are those are not you know brick and mortar shops. Those are different sort of scenarios. It's kind of strange to think about it being at a uh, a brick and mortar place cashless. Don't you think? What's the difference? There is a difference. Um, so it, so if I'm if I'm running a sandwich shop or something and I got a brick and mortar shop like I'm I'm set up here I'm set up to do full commerce here, if I'm a place that then has a booth and an enterprise that I'm only there for home games or or whatever it may be, that's not my like that's not my home you know that's like a rented space I'm not gonna have a vault there. You know what I think I think that uh, remember that remember there everybody was going towards the cashless thing and people were outraged going I, a lot of people don't have credit cards. Mm -hmm. You know, that's you're discriminating against people that don't have, you know, credit cards. And then the pandemic happened and it was cashless. And that's now an excuse mm -hmm. to keep everything cashless. Yeah. Big card came through and said, yeah, now you're cashless. OK, yeah. so this particular Jimmy John's location, yeah. I don't I don't know if there were signs posted, whatever. OK, guy orders a sandwich. Made it for him. Then he finds out he, they don't accept cash. In this particular situation, you don't accept cash that day because of an issue with the register. Okay. Oh. What does the kid? What does the kid do? Who's behind the register? He takes it. Holds on to it. Does he? Does he take it? Well, I mean, what would you do? Well, you can't have it. You, you just can't have it. You, you just say, ah, uh, you know what? So now do you throw so it sorry, out? This is not working. Would you throw it out? Uh, yeah, probably. Unfortunately, yeah. Like, do you throw it out in front of the guy? No, you the guy's not leaving. You probably put it in the back so staff can have it when they. The leave. guy's not leaving. Listen, does he look like trouble? I eat it right in front of him. <laughs> if, yeah, if he looks like trouble, you split it in half. You gave him, you give him half. You eat half and say, "Here, it, this one's on me." <laughs> have a seat with him. Usually, give him people, a water cup. People will preface, "Hey, but are you paying with cash or card?" Because our machine is down. Yeah, it's his fault for making the sandwich without telling him that. Yeah, there should have been some sort of, hey, we, we have a problem. I, I would have hoped that they would have said, hey, just so you know, we're not accepting cash. Or there's signs saying we're not accepting cash. Mm -hmm. But if he already made the sandwich and he didn't tell him that until the end, uh, maybe you owe him a sandwich. The systems were, and yeah, Nate here. I'm right? with Moon, yeah. The systems were down at the J uh, Jimmy John's <laughs> for the video. He explained he could take a card, but he's unable to accept cash. Now, the guy in the video, the customer is kind of goading. The, the, like, he's being a dick, too. Oh, sure. well, then screw you, man. Just be Here, cool. Here's the interaction. 
You don't accept cash, and you made my sandwich, and you're just going to throw it away. Can I just have my sandwich? No, I'm not going to risk my job for you. Because you don't accept money? No, because you can't pay. Oh, this is going to be funny for your manager. You can go ahead and leave. Talk to my manager if you want. They're not going to do a damn thing for you. Yeah, hey, you. I hate the guy taking the video. I hate the customer. The one guy was like, it's just circumstances. That's the best thing you said. He didn't have to, you're not getting a damn thing or, you know, that, that sucks. That's, yeah, that's just not stay, good. stay pro. Stay pro. I know and it's the kid, tough. It's, it's like a, it looks like a teenager. Yeah, right, Maybe right. in the early 20s. Although, I'll say this about Jimmy John's staff, and this is not a knock. They're laid back as hell. Like, the kids that were, that were making my sandwiches. Yeah, it's a high last, job. They, everybody, I mean, they, yes, it's stoner job I'm you, half and of, I'm fine with it. I minute. want my <laughs> sandwich artist high. Yeah, because they're going to layer on the glog. Yeah. <laughs> I you want know, you to really feel what you're doing. Put some energy into this sandwich. That's why I go to Jimmy John's. I want a laid back atmosphere, a good sandwich, and I want to, you know, have a good day. Like, no problems. It's freaking Tommy Bahama up in there. Yeah, I want that, those good vibes into my, as, as he's making my sandwich, I want it to be. I want the good vibes put in the sandwich, too. Yeah. Everything's all right, man? Yeah. A little salt and vinegar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> salt and pepper? <laughs> <laughs> I can see Ray for going to Jimmy John's. Where okay. Where'd that steel drum come from? <laughs> I don't know, man. Puka shell necklace, all of it. Just comes on sometimes, man. Most people seem to think that the cash complaint is, is, is a fair gripe. Okay. Yeah. But then Life I, isn't fair. But the systems, the systems are down. Yes. This guy doesn't have a card on him. Like, how bad yeah, is that? He's just being a dick. Circumstances Take it up a corporate. don't always favor you, all right? Sometimes the world, you, it's, you got an obstacle or two. You dork. But then at the same time, the sandwich is already made. I mean, and it, he threw it out right in front of him. Yeah, it would have been, been nice to, to just hand it to him. There, it's in the trash. Go get it. He threw it out right. I mean, what are you gonna do? That's you didn't pay for but it. But don't you love it if you're like at a star? Oh, it happened the other day. I was at. Uh, it was actually one of those like Starbucks at the Target, and I know that they're under like different rules or scrutiny or whatever yeah. it is. And I went and I picked something up, and I was like, "Oh, is this is this one for my daughter?" And she goes, "Yeah." And somebody ordered this thing, but we made it wrong. So you want this one? And I was like, Oof. Kind of "Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah." I want a s strawberry, whatever right. this is, or what was a pink drink? What, what's a pink drink? That's Starbucks. That's what I mean. It, oh. What is that made of? Because holy smokes, that was good. Ladybug shells. It's made of like cream and like whatever. Strawberry. Strawberry yeah. syrup. Pure sugar, have. whatever it was. My daughter got it. I go, let me it try was this. free. It's garbage. I don't want that. It was free and it tasted great. 14 cavities. <laughs> but that's like the bonus. If you're, if you're nice and you're just like, hey, you know, whatever. And they're like, oh, man, we made this on accident. <laughs> yeah, Here, take it. It's such a curmudgeon. I went to McDonald's yesterday and had my, I think it was my sixth <laughs> filet fish of 2024. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I paid with cash because I got ban money and uh i you already go through those gift cards we gave you i did yeah those are gone <laughs> blew through those man <laughs> man how much was that don't ask me you've gone I through spent. like i have a problem 75 dollars oh, worth of fish uh, dude, i just saw I, w I watched a video yesterday of them talking about how mcdonald's like prices have gone up well, and you round it's, it's up. It's damn near unaffordable. They got the double fish people. fillet. I saw that. Oh the other yeah, day. people are tagging me up Ooh. in the double fish fillet, which I did not do. You didn't. Uh -uh. Good for you. Yeah, I'm trying That's to hard hold to resist. Back. It is hard. Well, I paid with cash yesterday, and I did round up for Ronald McDonald House, and then the man seemed very confused whenever he gave me my money back, like the uh, change. So I think people are just confused in general about cash paying, and like we're a different society now. <laughs> I told you we went to go to that Froyo place in the valley. Yeah. My mom took the kids. My mom took the kids. And uh, she gave cash, and the girl behind the counter didn't couldn't figure out how to do change. Right. Left the drawer open while she ran to the back. My mom robbed the place. <laughs> well, I mean, nice. That's I mean you basically invited to. I don't want to lose money on this, bro. I just want to go back to the fact that you demanded to taste your daughter's drink just so you could run it into the ground. No, I wanted to try it. <laughs> yeah, what is open this? mind? Give it to me. That's good. I mean, you, the way you said it. Didn't sound open minded. It sounded like very. Close I went in with a poor attitude. You did. I'll you went in with you. like. I went, no. in, I went in with a poor attitude. Me, that looks. No. Give me that so I can tell you how bad it is. Have you ever had joy from a straw drink? Like, have you ever just I been don't like, use ah, straws. this is great? I don't use straws. Good on you. Save the turtles. Right on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know why? Because it looks too feminine. Oh. Uh, let's get uh, some emails. Oh.
Okay. Couple emails, and then we have our Schlafly, our Schlafly friends. Who was the third party that got drug into this Jimmy John's thing? There was like a, he just, at some point in that video, he just, he goes, yeah, he goes hey, you. You ever heard of this thing? You ever heard of this? And I'm like, who's the guy that's in line? He's like, oh, man, don't did drag you, me Did you hear this. that guy, though? Yeah. He had the he had the employees back. He's like, yeah, man, it yeah. happens. It happens. <laughs> just let me get my damn sandwich. Yeah, the, the, the kids just following policy. I He's 15 and a half. I feel bad for the worker. Same. I mean, the guy's like, come on, please. It's above his problem. You yeah. Know? This kid's. My manager told me I can't take cash. Yeah. This kid's learning how to drive after he gets off work today. Like, cut him mm. a break, you jackass. Have you ever tried the pink drink? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. It's pretty good. I haven't either, it's too but I don't sweet. want it. I don't, yeah, it's strawberry ice cream melted. Too. No, it's man. Awesome. I haven't. Now, I didn't. But I know it makes people of, happy. In front of the girl. Which is probably what bothers you so you. much about it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what my thoughts were. Okay. In front of the girl. You didn't act this way? She's mini you, so she probably didn't take offense anyway. First of all, I think you're lying. I, yeah, you're, you're right. I may have said it. I may have actually put it that <laughs> yeah. way. Poor child. I know better than that. It makes her tough. Oh, she is tough as nails, dude. It's going to make her tough. I'm scared as hell. This is garbage. Scared. This is garbage. Enjoy your cavity. Hand it right back to her. I'm not paying for your dentistry. All right, Moon. Emails. emails. Emails brought to you by Kloss Furniture. Lowest prices guaranteed. We have something for everybody. Feet lifter checking in. Oh, my, oh my gosh. God. I want to know what Man. this guy looks like. So I like mostly from calves to bottom of the feet. Remember we were talking about like heels and like what? what is it? Bottom of the, you know. Yeah, right. what's, what's his what turn What is off? it that you like about this? I said, toes are nice, but my obsession lies with the soles. No dude feet. I would guess soles because that's the part least seen. But definitely soles obsessed. Okay, now we know. Okay, thank you. So he's a souls guy. Souls I'm guy. a souls guy. <laughs> no, right. toes, I'm toes are okay. Uh, next. Toes are okay. Toes are okay. <laughs> toes are okay. We need toes to cut are okay. that track. That's going on the Rizzuto <laughs> Press Vinyl. Oh man. But toes are okay. Toes are okay. Uh, Riz, I can <laughs> tell you with certainty that Chris Kerber is not amused by the different middle names you keep giving him on air when he's on the blues segment with you. Would you consider dropping that bit? He deserves respect, sir. Have a grateful day. Oh. <laughs> My favorite. What? Chris Signed. Isaac Kerber is the best. Signed. Drop the bit. He deserves the respect, Signed Chris sir. Chris Kerber's agent. Have a grateful day. No. Now it's now it's on. Now I'm never stopping it just because of spite. Really? For you. He was Chris Bartholomew Kerber yesterday. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Amadeus, the, the year before, or the, the week yeah, before. Yeah, Chris the... Amadeus Kerber. He was also Chris Tiberius Kerber. Tiberius. <laughs> Tiberius. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh, it's never ending. Maximus Decimus Meridius. It could be, it could be Ma Christopher Maximus Kerber next week. I don't know. <laughs> next, you jerk. Hey, I just wanted to say that my mom is obsessed and loves your podcast. She watches it each time uh, she can, every single day. Like the first thing in the morning, that's exactly what she does. She even gets frustrated when she feels like it's behind, she's behind on the podcast because she didn't have enough time. I try to talk to my mom a lot, but I can't because she's so obsessed with watching you guys, uh, even with her headphones in. I was just wondering if you could give her a shout out. No. Oh, oh, sorry. Her name is Angela Johnson. No, we don't. I'm sorry. Angela Johnson. We don't give We will shout never outs. shout out Angela Johnson. No, no absolutely we would not. not. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to read that email. We don't uh, We don't give shout outs. Angela. Angela. Yeah. Angela Johnson. Done with that. We are not shouting you out. Mm -mm. Sorry about that. All right, one more because we got our guests in the lobby. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh. Hi, learning guys. Hi. Hey. hey. Just wanted to thank you for a truly incredible night last night. This was uh, Sunday. My sister is an OG Team Riz member, class of 17, and surprised me with <coughs> VIP tickets for my birthday. I'm Whoa, always too VIP nervous tickets. to say anything to you guys. Uh, I think she called Rafe Sir <laughs> when he said he liked my pork steak army t-shirt, even though making Riz laugh one day is on my bucket list. But you all were awesome and so kind. The Jeff segment was so touching, and I think I almost passed out laughing at the GW video skit. Such an awesome time. Met some of the cool, some cool fellow listeners. Solid three out of five stars. Future team res member Laura. P.S. King Scott or his hair or both smell incredible. Mm. Oh, thank you. He does take very good care of her. King Scott's uh, in Springfield today uh, visiting what? His mother? It's his mother's birthday. Yeah, it's his so. mother's birthday. Uh, yes, thank you for coming. Appreciate that. Thanks for uh, splurging on the VIP. Uh, as far as the videos that were played. Yeah. We got a lot of videos that were played during uh, Racial Live. We released we're going to release them uh, like like one a week. Yeah, we released one on Tuesday. Yep. The Dropkick drop video. Dropkick's out. We'll release uh, 
there's several videos, and and probably once a week, we'll we're, we're going to slowly put them out on social media and YouTube. So be on the lookout. But all the vids that were at Riz Show Live will eventually be out in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe even learn re learns <laughs> mom reading the uh, Craigslist Freak of the Week. Maybe that's for sure. Oh, yeah, it's happening. Oh, maybe. Your yeah, she's been be really barking at us saying, make sure that's public. Make sure right. that's Put public. that everywhere. A lot of said. people want to see the uh, the Jeff video. We'll put that out there oh, yeah. as well. So, that was uh, yeah, just keep an eye on the YouTubes. And we'll, uh, we'll put, those out, put those out. But in the meantime, make sure you watch that Dropkick video. And, yeah, it's on Instagram, TikTok, all of that. Somebody else checking in about the curb situation, like... Dan, what is he, uh, email? It is awkward. You can tell Curbs isn't into it. Guys, you're idiots. <laughs> you do not know Chris Kerber. You know nothing about him. You're all dumb. Stop emailing. He's us. our friend, <laughs> not your <laughs> friend. We know the guy. He's cool as hell. He thinks it's hilarious. You guys are idiots. You do. You're not clairvoyant, and you're not best friends with Chris Kerber. So shut up. Thank you. Does he Thank call you, you on the weekends? Have you eaten dinner? Does he call you at home? <laughs> all right, we got to take a break. To think like Chris Kerber. <laughs> you must be Chris Kerber. <laughs> you must think like Chris Kerber. Get inside Chris Kerber's Ichabod head. Chris Kerber loves it. <laughs> Ichabod, that's a great one. Put that on the list. All right, we're going to talk to our friends from uh, Schlafly next. Uh, tomorrow and Saturday, it's the Schlafly Stout and Oyster Festival. We'll give you all the details uh, up next, and we'll shuck some oysters. It is 8.59. It's the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Traveling and weather, moon coming at you. Would you look at that? Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Left lane blocked due to a crash 54 north. I'm sorry, 55 northbound. I'm not sure where 54 is, but 55 northbound at Butler Hill Road. Your point forecast, scattered rain, possible high of 59. Right now it is 60, sorry, 47 at the point studio. Whole house, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Whole bunch of shuckers in here. Going to talk about the uh, Schlafly Stout and Oyster Festival. So we got uh, Sun, who is a West Coast shucker. We have Trace, who's an East Coast shucker. And we have Kara, who's the uh, Schlafly Bottle Works general manager. Yes. Man. So, A, it's a, it's a big deal. It's it a big deal. It's the party we throw for Schlafly every year. This is our 24th year. It's 24th year. So 24. Holy cow. Okay, so normally it's downtown. Yes. Outside the uh, uh, the Schlafly uh, tap room, tap room yeah, down there. But you've moved it out to Maplewood. We did it was soccer for this game year. after soccer game after soccer game, and it just needed something different. Oh yeah, it's a lot. I well, mean, they have seventeen I mean, games this season, so it's it's a party every time. It is there. a party, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember we went down to you know the first uh, you know City SC game I went to, we partied at Schlafly, <laughs> which was I mean, have you have you been down there during a game? No, not during a game, but I've, I've I joined the march. There was like you know because they do the march from there, and I was On like Lincoln ah pro Street. yeah probably about a, like a quarter of it because I had missed the time when they left and all the party. So I kind of just joined in. And was like woo yeah I was there. No, because <laughs> outside the tap room, I mean, you got that nice little courtyard there. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. It's a perfect. Uh, and then spot. you go inside and you and you get a beer and you kind of hang out out there. Yeah, perfect mm -hmm. spot, perfect distance to march. Like it's it's right. Yeah, this year we jam. have beer tents, food tents out there, everything. So. Yeah, but it's just a lot at, to put together. At Bottle Works, you have, I mean, a giant yes, parking lot. We do have a giant parking lot, giant pavilion that's covered and heated when necessary. So it's just logistics wise, it was a good move for us. Right. Uh, so, all right. So it's tomorrow and it's Saturday. Yes. Tomorrow from 5 to 9, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. It is, you know, it's a, it's a huge deal. It's a huge festival. You have shuckers and oyster heads from all over the country. Yes. People call at least once a day the last two weeks prior. Where do I stay? Where do I stay? Where's right. closest to you? Cheshire um, is where we recommend. Just uh, We've been partners with them for a long time as a place to house the shuckers and hang out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a cool hotel, too. It is. It's such a cool yeah, it's hotel. A super cool yeah. spot. I stayed there last year with them. And how it was does really one amazing. become a shucker? I'm so interested in this. Like, what? <laughs> how did you know? I mean, obviously, you had to be a fan of oysters, so you started eating them probably in your youth, and you're like, one day I'm going to learn how to do this myself or did you how does this happen uh you get kicked out of college uh -huh. you, get a final Check. Job, um, you, you fall into the restaurant business and then someone gives you a knife said don't cut yourself and then you cut yourself right and then you cut yourself and you cut yourself and you so, learn so son you're the you're the west coast shucker yes trace you're the east coast yes, shucker. Sir. yeah so son where are you from uh seattle originally i'm in california now okay yeah. seattle california yeah. trace and, where are you from uh, north carolina north carolina yeah. what are the difference between the east coast and west coast oysters well, I think uh, West Coast is a lot sweeter. 
Yeah. Um, and it has more fruit notes behind him. It, there, it's a different. It's a different species of oyster. So, which makes it different right off the bat. So, the oyster from the East Coast, basically from the Gulf all the way to Nova Scotia, is a Virginica oyster. Right. Um, so, um, and that particular oyster um, generally has a little bit thinner meats. It's generally a little bit saltier. Whereas the Pacific oyster is a Giga oyster. Um, that oyster, mm. a lot of people will say that it has like a watermelon rind or a cucumber mm. type flavor. Cool. Um, and the meats are a little firmer. Um, right. I find for a fried oyster, they make a much better fried oyster than a Virginica ever would. Um, and, and I love the way they taste too. I mean, so it's, you know, but it's definitely a whole different species, whole different animals. Right. So folks will get six different oysters this weekend. Oh, right. cool. Yeah. Do you, uh, by the way, his shirt says Oyster Pimp. That's, Oyster that's Pimp, amazing. yeah. Uh, you know, when, I'm sorry, when you, when you mention oysters, some people, like, recoil, like, ooh, you know, I don't, ugh. As a uh, raw oyster, you know, it's it's got a weird consistency. Uh, you just got to try it, basically. You just got to yeah. sack up and try it. I've only, so I've only tried it once. I didn't know there was so many different ones. I thought, Oyster, Oyster. Uh, the, only time, the only time I've had it was on the east coast of Australia. Okay. I have no idea what kind of oyster that is, or how th how does that compare? How does my one experience compare to these? I had no idea they were so very different. Pretty good chance that oyster was a Giga oyster. The West Coast one yeah. from here? Oh, okay. Um, just because of its proximity, um, I mean, there's only five species that that people typically eat, um, and these are two of them. Mm -hmm. so, cool. Uh, As an oyster pimp, could I ask you? <laughs> Do you always shuck before you suck, or is it okay to suck? <laughs> great question. That's a great question, right? You, you actually have to shuck before you suck. All right. Yes, you Good to know. Shuck. Because I had to suck first. Then, no, no. I was a rookie. You I had to suck first. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. I embarrassed myself. Kara, how many how many oysters will be consumed this weekend? We started with 50,000, and we added another 10 about oh four days God. ago to fly in uh, just due to the weather. Saturday, 50 degrees. You want a little bit colder weather? Right. Um, for that, no one wants to eat raw oysters or drink, you know, you know these stouts. Are, they're not thick and heavy, but they are dark. And yeah. so people equivocate that with that colder temperature. So 50 and sunny on Saturday is just magic heaven That's for us. Perfect. So we were like, give me 10,000 more. So we were rocking 60,000, six different varieties. We've got the raw. We have Rockefeller. See, which, Rockefeller, right? So we we're stuffed 7,000 oysters. So we, were talking about, we were talking about oysters <laughs> Rockefeller earlier, you know, for those of you not adventurous. And, yeah, what is that? And, yeah. That's when so they're baked. That or, is or like, bacon, spinach, cream, um, delicious seasonings, and then you put it on the oyster, bake them for about 10 minutes, and it's then put like Whoa. melted cheese and then uh, panko crust on top. Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll delicious. also have fried. We'll have chowda. We've got all of it covered. Yeah, you got. I mean, it's, <laughs> again, it's a it's a big deal, and it's it's tomorrow and it's Saturday. Schlafly Bottle Works this year out in Maplewood. All right, so teach uh, Learn and Rafe how to shuck here. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm 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 watching this. I see and blades. Man. So. Many different methods of shucking. My particular method is called the hinge method. So I'm going to go in through the back of the oyster at the hinge. Um, you put your knife in and wiggle it just a little bit to get it open. And then you, you scrape. It does seem dangerous. Cut it like from I, the top of the shell. Mm, I feel like I would have stabbed myself. you got to scrape. Yeah, you got to scrape under. Basically, there's an abductor muscle there. So you, you want to unhook it from the abductor muscle so the consumer can just eat the oyster. Yeah, and this I, you need it like this to go. <laughs> <laughs> Chew three times. At is that least. is it true three at times? Least, at least, yeah. Because when I mean, you want to break it up, you want to get those flavors that are in there. Right. Uh, when you mentioned that there, you didn't think there's so many different. It's just like IPAs. You line up three IPAs, they're all different. Okay. Same thing with oysters. Right. And the liquid inside is called the liquor. The liquor, liqueur. right? The liqueur. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So you're supposed to chew it. See, I always yeah. thought it was a th you were supposed to shoot it and just three chews. Bye. At least. Well, you got to taste it. Well, I didn't know. I like. I'm. I'm serious. Like, I think a lot of people are intimidated because they don't. They don't want to go in there and look like a fool. You know what I'm saying? So. All right, is, son. Son, what is your uh, what is your of choice as far as toppings on that go? Uh, just a Fixings. little bit. Just a little bit of lemon. Just lemon. That's just it. A lemon juice. That's it. So you're not a horseradish guy. I mean, you can go down that road, but honestly, just just a touch of maybe like a drop or two of lemon juice. That's it. Tabasco. I like Tabasco. I'm on. Yeah, you want some heat? Yeah, man. I, but I want to taste it. Before you do any of that, you taste the oyster. Just a little bit of lemon juice. That's it. Hey, that one's just sitting there. Somebody needs to eat that, right? <laughs> right. Can I? Can I? Do you mind if I oh, do yeah, a little fixing of it. it up? Oh, sure. Here, I recommend you put a little bit of these on it. What's that? Here, you now, these are algae berries. 
algae that have been uh, soaked in mignonette. So there's a, so there's a, that's vinegar. So you may not want to hit too much lemon on there because okay. um, it's already going to be acidic. Um, but basically, mignonette is a traditional sauce for oysters. It's vinegar, shallots, and peppercorns. So we just take that, marinate these algae berries in it. Um, so basically, it's, shoot that, it, learn. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it makes it mm. quite unique. All right, let me try. Because I don't remember the experience. Ray, if I want to oh, see you so try good. to shuck one, go ahead. That is refreshing. Huh? Come on, man. He said, huh? Hey, huh? Go shuck yourself, you know what I mean? <laughs> shuck around and find out. It's the theme of the Go weekend. shuck, buddy. <laughs> All right. Ray's oh, my gosh, that is so fresh. You can taste the sea. There's that is live, delicious. Also live music this uh, at the festival? Yeah, yeah. Pass yes. that over here. We I'll, have I'll bands again. Friday and Saturday. We also have a live DJ inside. That way you end up inside because there's no room outside. We've got stuff going on. So, we also have a um, new tent this Bina's year first uh, one, with it being in a neighborhood. Table, so you're gonna yeah. put your we wanted to like go that. for um, yeah, more of the festival experience. Bottoms up, Moon. Rafe's being taught how to shuck, and Kara's explaining the what's going on. Ooh, that's good. Oh, Rafe, don't hurt yourself. So it can't go anymore before you Whoa. turn, because then you sort of just strip Did you like that? area out. Okay. Like <laughs> that's hand. amazing. That it's delicious. Um, if you, 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 would, you wouldn't feel it if it was... I mean, it feels like it's stopping right okay, there. Okay, so then... Twist? Twist. There you Whoa, go. Whoa, dude. Oh, dude, you shocked it, man. Oh. And then you want to just sort of... What a great it shock. A bit so you can see that top It does taste like the ocean in all the good ways. Yeah. yeah. And then, so Refreshing. That's kind of incredible. All right. And then you would cut it off of that bottom abductor muscle so as well. Go in here. Yep. There you go. Just kind of loosen that up. Loosen that up. It's a wrap. You've shocked an oyster, brother. Hell yeah. Yo. Rafe has shocked his first oyster. Congratulations, Rafe. I'm going to say you want to come do that this weekend. He's going to be in Denver this weekend. Uh, hey, so so like when you're when you're ha when you're having a meal, like what's what's a what's a meal? Is it five? Do you get twelve? Do you get thirty? Like what what do you go for? If I'm just like going, if, I, if I'm walking into an oyster bar and I'm wanting to try a handful of the different oysters they have on the list, um, I, I would say at least two dozen. Would two dozen. Two dozen? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I felt like that one was like a pretty big bite yeah. and like I could fill up on these pretty quick. But I've eaten 15 dozen at once. Oh. Damn. Oh my so. goodness. What's the world record? 33, I believe. 33 so it dozen? Might be up to 45. It'd be at the Acme Oyster House in New Orleans. I'm and sure that was at like a, uh, was that a, a uh, Joey Vietnamese Chestnut? Lady. No, she's a little Vietnamese lady. <laughs> Weighs like oh, is that the one they call the Black Widow? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's her name. I think they call it the Black Widow. It says the world record here was set in Montreal. 492 oysters were eaten in under 27 minutes. Damn. Uh, this person, Sonia Thomas, ate 46 dozen. Sonia Thomas, in, in that's under, the Black Widow. In under 10 minutes. <laughs> I've been to the Acme. They call the Black Widow. I've been to the Acme Oyster House in, in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. That place is the jam. Yeah. That was great. I get it now. <laughs> that was really incredible. You should have one of these to just to get the flavor, to see the, the difference in taste. And how many how many can you shuck in, uh, in uh, like, five minutes? Oh, gosh. Um, 100 or so? Yeah, they don't stop. They don't stop. We actually have a masseuse yeah, yeah. for them on Friday and Saturday oh, really? because it, it hurts. You want me to yeah. make you one up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, yeah, do me up one. I love the way when people describe them to me because I can't eat them. I'm allergic. Oh, really? oh, you are? Yeah. No, I'm, I moved 60,000 oysters yesterday on 3-Benadryl because I love this event that much. <laughs> so wow. you're allergic to oysters? Yeah. I was a size of a balloon yesterday, covered in a rash. <laughs> and it was Damn, so worth really? it. No oh, way. Absolutely. And what's the uh, what's it's the totally best beer to, to pair with? Uh, I know. think the Irish cream stout is my favorite, but we do have um, a ton of specialty ones. We have the oyster stout that they actually make. We have a Tabasco oyster stout. Yeah. Tropical stout. Oh, we Tabasco have a, uh, oyster stout. Yeah. We have a Randall machine where you can infuse a stout with fresh fruit. So we'll have that this year. Um, horseradish stout. That's a big one. Wow, damn. Yeah. So Get you one. 12. There's the West Coast one right there. And this is what the... Uh... That's the sweeter one with the algae berries. Aphrodisiac, too, right? Is that a myth? <laughs> or are they... What time are you guys off? Every third one? Every right third on my second. One. Here we go. <laughs> it's every third one works. That's, That's awesome. really good. That's why you have oh, a couple dozen. So then, you know, after we get finished shucking these 50,000 oysters, then we have our, our shuck-off event every year. Mm. Um, and so basically it's west coast against the east coast, six oysters. So one guy shucks six oysters, and then you got another person that eats six. Oh, damn. And then the final person chugs the pint. Mm. And then whoever completes that first 
Carries home an 80 pound block of wood to say, Schlafly Soyster. And who won last year? Uh, Did the East Coast East win last year or West I Coast? Mean, I don't know. That, I feel like at some point they, they, they always jump the gun a little bit. I cheated. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm the drinker for the East Coast team. And... So the East Coast took it? Chug, it just disappears. East Coast ticket, yeah. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many guys approximately do you have to shuck off to win? <laughs> World oh, championship status. <laughs> a lot. I love that I it's have a team 18 guys and two girls. Yeah, right. 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 We, have, we have a shucker fluffer. They are very busy this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to see the moister than the oyster. Moister shirt, than though. the oyster tomorrow. So, and anybody and anybody could, could walk up and. Yeah, it is free to attend. Um, you just pay for whatever food and beverage you want. If you don't like oysters, which is a crime, you know, unless you... Why would you go to an oyster fest die. if you don't like oysters? That's why we brought in other things. There's oh, amazing see? music. Yeah, Top Golf will be there. Mighty Kind will be there. The inside restaurant has regular food. The music. The music alone. The right. vibe. Somebody you really like likes oysters. Yes. That's right. This is a very unique opportunity for them. He doesn't so. know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what doing something nice for, for some other people. <laughs> I've been watching the show for a long time. Damn. That's valid. Damn, <laughs> that man. checks out. And that hurts. Did you say somebody he likes? I don't know about that. <laughs> I like people. I know. <laughs> like three. Know. My kids are nice <laughs> most of the time. You like your dog. Cat I dog. love my dogs. Both dogs. Cat the dog and new dog. Yes. <laughs> My, uh, those are my people. Yeah. They, they're the only ones that understand me. Because they're a couple of bitches. Just, just All right, so I want to see Rafe and Learn uh, do some shucking right now. Okay. Why don't you guys shuck some oysters? Sure. Um, mm. Going to remind everybody once again, the Schlafly Stout and Oyster Festival is tomorrow. It's from 5 to 9. Yes. It's Saturday from 11 to 9. Uh, 60,000 oysters. Yes. Will be served over the next we'll two be days. live shucked yeah. in front live of your face. Live shucked right in front of your yep. face. <laughs> um, everything's on ice. Oh. Everything's everything's all in the up and up. Yes. Live Come music. rain or shine. Rain Vegas or shine. tents. We have two massive tents, a covered pavilion inside. Everything is 100% covered. How many shuckers do you have coming in? 20. We try and do 20 every year. I'm Next year for 25, we're going to go a little higher. Trace and I are talking about bringing in um, some people from the Gulf. So that'll be new and different. So we've got a lot of plans. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for the oysters. We're gonna we're gonna snack on some oysters during the break. Uh, we have to take a break. Rafe and Learn are gonna be shucking. We're videoing the shucking. Yeah. Make sure you check it out online. Instagram Live for his show. Yeah. What what else? What else do we have to know about the festival? Just come. Just come. Come and enjoy it. Have come. fun. Hey, are come you selling? Are you selling those po those posters? The posters are available. Uh, yeah, we brought you yeah, guys each cool. one. Oh, I guess King awesome. Scott, you know, he can. Whatever. He decided not to be here when that's I was That's one of the today, coolest so event posters I've guy. ever seen. Yeah, it's very red. Yeah. But, yeah oh, that's, that's awesome. Cool, we'll put man. that up in the office for sure. So, we've got right. lots of merch available. It's a Schlafly Stout and Oyster Festival. It is tomorrow. It is Saturday. It bottle works in Maplewood. It's free to come. Uh, bring the whole family. Absolutely. And enjoy your oysters uh, this weekend. Thank you. You guys are awesome. All right, we'll take a break. we got to come back. We have uh, your headline who's story. It is 926. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather. One final look, Moon, coming at That's you. That's right. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. All things clear. Let's try to keep it that way. Your point forecast scattered rain is possible. High of 59. Right now it is 47 at the point studio. For what's That's it for us. Our apologies to Donnie Fandango, who's next. Actually, it doesn't smell bad. And we had somebody come in and give the room a sniff test. Nobody would have yeah. known. No. Gave him a whiff. Ah. I, I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna go. Hey, man, if it if it stinks, it's Lauren's fault. It's, it's my fault. fault. All right. Uh, today's uh, wrap up sponsored by sponsored by Jack in the Box. Jack wraps a little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence only at Jack. All right. What uh, is today's podcast title? Today's podcast is titled "We're on Smacks and Oysters." Okay. Uh, don't forget about the Schlafly Stout and Oyster Festival, which is at Bottle Works in Maplewood tomorrow and on Saturday. Thanks to Kara uh, and Son and Trey for coming in and bringing us those oysters. Delicious. Mm -hmm. We were just talking during the break like they were, that they was were amazing. Very cool. That was Fresh very as cool. hell. And it's cool to taste them back to back like that, like the different coasts, because they are very different. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Thank you guys for that. Uh, tomorrow, your Friday Fail Stories. We'll have the Freak of the Week winner. If you missed, learn, reading any of the freaks, go back to the podcast and make sure you listen and vote via Twitter at R-I-Z-Z Show. What else, Moon? 
Uh, check out that story of the gear channel. I've had a bunch of emails asking me about different guitars or pedals that I use and different stuff. I'm going to be posting all of those things. But the latest episode has Dan Jacobs from Atreyu talking about his, well, speaking of fish, his uh, sushi guitars. He literally has a guitar designed like a bento box and has mm. sushi inside the wood. It's it's amazing. The, the knob is a uh, is a avocado roll. It's hysterical. Amazing. People Check are so creative. Dude, yeah. this guy is so creative. He has two sushi guitars, and we featured him on the latest ep episode of Story of the Gear. Make sure you subscribe. It's a YouTube channel. You'll enjoy it. Thank you, Moon. Learn. Uh, just follow me on the socials, Learn versus Radio. And go uh, see Rafe this weekend if you're in Denver. If you're in Denver. Uh, my sister's going. My friend, my friends, Christy and Sean will be there. They're excited, man. It's all the weirdos out in, in, uh, in the Denver area. Yeah, Rafe will be there uh, tomorrow night. Yep. I'm leaving right after the show, and I'm going to do a little quick spot. At a club tonight, but my shows are tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday night. Uh, don't tell comedy. At the Catbird Hotel. So I guess I just told. Yeah, don't tell nobody, man. I said They said I could tell. It's uh, the Catbird Hotel on the rooftop. It's a rooftop show. Should be a very cool venue. It's heated nice. rooftop. Um, and then I'll be at the Comedy Underground for the late sets also, which is right around the corner from the Catbird. Cool. All right, uh, safe travels, uh, Rafe. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, uh, we leave you with a selection from our team members member of the day, which is brought to you by Hot Shots, St. Louis home for blues hockey from Fenton, Missouri.